Okay, our zoning development committee is meeting tonight to discuss the MCZ development proposal at 4511 North Clark. Before MCZ development presents to the, co to the committee and our residents, I'll pass it over to Tressa Fear, my chief of staff for the roll call. Tressa? Hello, hello everyone. Um, good to kind of see you. Um, let me, uh, I'm just gonna call the roll here and, um, <laughs> and I, everything else is in Kylie's capable hands. She's amazing. So if you have any questions, please ask her. Um, I'm gonna start with uh, 3600 North Lakeshore Drive. D Douglas, are you here? Okay. Um, 3660 North Lakeshore Drive, Jim Hennigan. Here, okay. yeah. Um, Mari Wallace, uh, Charles Ramsdell, 4840. Yes, I'm here. All right. Um, 555 Cornelia, Kurt. President. Thank you. Um, 700 West Bittersweet. Uh, here. Alice, thank you. Yes. <laughs> Um, 828 Grace. Hey, Tris, I'm hey, here. Hey, thank I'll, you. I'll do double duty for Elvin too. I know Marty's probably not on tonight. Marty okay, on. yep. All right, uh, Beacon Block Club, Dustin. Actually, we had Stuart Berman. I'm the VP oh, of Beacon for Dustin, who is thank uh, you. out tonight. He's flying. Thanks, Stuart. Wenna Park Neighbors. Present. Thank you. Clarendon Park neighbors. Here. Thank you. Clark Street Block Club. Here. Thank you. Uh, historic Structures, Marty Tangora. Yeah, here. Thanks, Marty. Um, Lakeside Area Neighbors, Marianne Lalonde. Here. Thank you. Lakeview East. Okay, Lakeview East Chamber, I mean that neighborhood. Uh, Kathy Cook, Magnolia Malden. Here. Thank you. Uh, real Estate, Mark Zipper. Here. Thank you. Uh, transportation Chester. Um, UCC Patrick Waters. Here. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Truman Square Neighbors. Dan Mercurial. I am here. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Um, Triangle Neighbors. John. Friendly Towers. I don't think Glenn was able to make it. Um, North Halstead Business Alliance, Mark. Here. Thank you. And let's see, 4250 Marine Drive. 4300 North Marine. I'm here. Hello. 4343 Clarendon. Um, 4848 North Sheridan. He told me Stuart said he couldn't be here. Um, 655 West Irving Park. Eight fifty Eastwood, Ainsley Winmore Block Club, Brian. Hi, we're here. Hi, thank you. Um, Castlewood Terrace, Dover Street Neighbors, Ken. Yeah. 
Yeah, you got me, Teresa? Got you. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Sorry for the mute. No, that's okay. <laughs> Just want to make sure everybody's working. You know, everyone's sound is working. Um, and then East Lakeview neighbors, Patrick, you are here for them. Um, I'm here too. Oh, you are great. Thanks. Hi, Teresa. Hi. Okay. And then um, Gill Park Co-op, 810 Grace. Okay, Graceland Wilson. Gunnison, James. I think, I'm sorry to jump in. I think Jason DeVore is here from Grayson oh. Wilson, but he's in as an attendee, not a panelist. I just saw him on the attendee side. Oh, okay. Maybe we can get him into the panel situation here. Um, yeah, for any attendees who believe they are panelists, if they could just message in the Q&A box, we will start switching over. Thank you. Um, Gunnison, James. I'm here. Oh, thank you. Okay. Lakeview East Co-op, 707 Waveland. Um, okay. Uh, Lakeview Towers. I don't think Steven's here. Uh, let's see, Nuna, James. Um, north side. Yes, one moment, please, Tressa. Noah is here. But oh, Noah is here. Okay, great. As a panelist, give me one moment. No problem. All right. Sorry, Noah. I'm here. Okay, great. Great. Um, retail, Luke Sauer. Okay. And then Ruth Schreiman, Jack. Okay. And Uptown United, Martin. Hi there. Thanks, Martin. Okay. And then we have Noah and we have Jason DeVore too. Okay. I marked you as here. Okay, we're finished. That's it. Thank you, Tressa. Uh, tonight we're joined by MCZ Development and their attorney, Nick Fatikas. Um, I will now give them the floor to present their proposal. Thank you very much, Alderman. This is again, Nick Fatikas. <clears throat> I'm one of the attorneys working with MCC Development on the proposed zoning change at 4511 North Clark Street. Um, the property itself uh, contains about 16,944 square feet of total lot area, and it is uh, currently a, a one-story uh, vacant retail building. And the uh, applicant is proposing to redevelop the site with a new uh, five-story mixed-use building. The proposed mixed-use building would have about 3,600 square feet of retail space at grade, uh, a total of 56 residential dwelling units and on-site parking for 28 cars. This is a, a transit-oriented development um, zoning change request, and we'd be providing 50% of the uh, technical requirement. In order to uh, complete our project or to entitle our project, we're seeking a type one transit-oriented development zoning change from the existing C1-2 zoning to a B3-3 zoning district. Um, we did submit a 46-word development application, and I wanted to make a few quick updates before I turn the floor over to our project architect. Um, the first one is in, in working through the review process, uh, we finalized or, or further developed our plan, and we now have a building that would be uh, a total of 58 feet uh, in height I think we'd initially uh, proposed a 61 foot plan. Second, there was some, uh, there was a t an error in the zoning change or the zoning request. Um, the current zoning is C1-2. And again, we're asking for a B3-3, again, type one transit oriented development application. And lastly, in working through the review, um, we also were able to find uh, an additional parking space. So we initially proposed 27 parking spaces. 
we're now at 28, again, at a 50% uh, unit to parking space ratio. Uh, Bill, if you want to maybe take, uh, take the group through your uh, building program and we could start to answer questions from there. Sure, we'd love to. Hello everyone, let me uh, share the screen. So as Nick had mentioned, uh, for what I'd like to do is I'll take, for those of you who are seeing this for the first time, I'll take you through the, the overall building. But uh, for those of you who are familiar with the previous scheme, it's changed a bit. As a result of our last community group meeting, it was expressed that we uh, should seek more outdoor space for departments. And you can sort of see from the front, part of that was to integrate the balconies into the building rather than have being these sort of balconies being hung off the building itself. So as Nick had said, uh, it's a one story uh, retail that runs the length of Clark and four stories of residential above. The first floor, let me take you through the... So the site itself spans from 4511 to 4523. Um, and as I mentioned, the Floors two, three, four, and five are residential. They are set back, it varies on the Clark side, either at minimum about 12 feet or uh, to 18 feet, depending on where you're at in the building. All those are units on the second floor would have terraces on that second floor terrace. And the rear of the building is set back to the requirement of 30 feet. And that second floor would be terrace space for those apartments as well. So there's about 7,000 square feet on the first floor. This is the first floor plan. This is the parking in the back. I'll show you the, the uh, first floor plan in a minute. And the rest of the floors are similar, except for they kind of push in and out, creating these balconies. And it's about a little over 10,000 square feet per floor. The, the whole building itself is about 49,000 square feet. Uh, the requirement here is, uh, I think the FAR allows us 59,000 square feet. So as Nick had mentioned, so this is Clark, the alley's back here. Um, along Clark, we have retail and then we have amenity space. Overall, we have about 135 feet of frontage. And as Nick had mentioned, we have about 3,300 square feet of retail here. And then the amenity space for the building would be about 1,800 square feet. Uh, bike access is, is from also both Clark and through the garage itself, where the residential entrance would be to the far north of the site. Entrance off the uh, alley is for both parking and loading to the north. And as Nick had mentioned, as a result of, you know, we've been working on this for several years and and the result here was moving things around. I, in flipping some things around, we were able to, to get to 20 uh, parking spaces. Uh, typical floor plan, as I said, you can see that the, this is the uh, elevation of the lot line on Clark side, and then this would be the alley level. So we're back 30 feet to the second floor of the building. And then, as I said, at minimum, we're 11 feet eight here, um, and then a mix of, of uh, studios, one bedrooms and two bedrooms. That was another change that we came across in, in looking at these closer, we have uh, reduced the amount of studios, we've increased the amount of two beds and decreased the number of one beds. So the unit mix is a little greater towards, weighted towards two bedrooms than the studios as it was before. So you can sort of see how the plans work. There, there are balconies off the rear and balconies off the front, and they'll vary from, from apartment to apartment. And each floor has a mix of studios, one beds and two beds. And you can sort of see depending on how deep the unit is. The fifth floor would kind of show you how those units would lay out. But again, each, some apartments will have a balcony space and other apartments will, will have in, in a little bit larger interior space. And then there's a small roof deck access for the entire building on top. The building elevation itself. So this is the Clark elevation. You can sort of see, you know, part of the, the intention here was to line up with the existing retail uh, spaces that are there. 
this would be the entry for the residential level. And then this is the mix of amenity space and uh, retail along Clark. And then, as I said, some of these units will have balconies. The idea was to integrate the units uh, within the building. Uh, our, our intention was to kind of create sort of a village within the building, to, to break it up rather than being a sort of big black thing that it becomes uh, smaller pieces, you know, so that you can start to see the individuality of each, uh, each uh, person who lives there. And then this would be the rear of the building. Again, the idea is to kind of create these uh, sunscreens, but also uh, create these balconies to integrate it with the building. Uh, there's green space at the second floor rear. And then the intention is to, to make that, uh, that back wall be uh, more green. And then you can, so this view here shows the, this is sort of a, if you were two stories tall, you would see the terrace of the second floor off of Clark. And then you can sort of see this section, this drawing kind of shows you, it's a building section of course, it shows you Clark Street here and the alley side here. And you can sort of see how the, the units kind of are set back certainly, but that they'll vary in depth off of Clark. And then it's a little bit more uniform on the rear side. Uh, this, as I said, is meets the 30 foot setback requirement uh, and the balconies would hang in that. And then this is the, the garage space and then the retail itself. And as Nick had mentioned, we are 58 feet currently. We dropped down a couple feet from where we were before. And that's all I have. So I'm happy to answer any questions. A reminder to panelists to please chat into the group if you'd like to be added to the list for questions. Okay, can you hear me okay? Alderman, I think you're on mute. Yeah, Alderman, you are on mute. Mute, okay, sorry. So thank you, MCZ development team. I will now take questions from the committee members. A reminder that committee members should chat all panelists that have a question, Kylie will then call on each committee member when it's their turn and out of respect for everyone's time, please keep your question concise. Uh, to ensure that we fit in as many questions from as many people as possible. Thank you, Alderman Kappelman. And then Jeff, you are first. Hey, thank you. Um, and, and thank you, MCZ, for um, the presentation. I was hoping you could um, remind us of the, uh, the ranges in rent across the studio to two bedrooms that um, research showed and um, as far as expectations that we can uh, that we should set when thinking about that. Sure. So uh, again, this is Nick Fatikas. Um, where uh, we kind of landed is we'd have a total of 12 uh, studio units and we anticipate rents between 1,000 and 1,200 for the studios. We'll have 24 one bedroom units and the unit uh, or the uh, rent per month would range between 1,400 and probably 1,700 uh, for the one bedrooms. And now uh, with the revisions, we'll actually have 22 bedroom units and those would probably rent uh, somewhere between 1950 and 2200 on the high end. Um, and, and those are the ranges that we're working with to frankly to pencil the, um, the financing for the project. Great, thank you. Next, Patrick. Um, yes, I just, it was uh, unclear to me why you wanted business zoning rather than commercial zoning. You know, it's something that we've gone back and forth on. Right now, the property is zoned C1-2. In a lot of uh, our redevelopment programs, as a concession, um, we'll offer to go down to a, to a B3. Our program for this building will work with either a B3-3 zoning district or C1-3 zoning district. We just went to the lower, frankly, out of habit um, because it, it gets us to the same place in terms of the construction of the building. If for the sake of consistency on the zoning map, if a C1 were preferred, we would absolutely agree to do that. It, it, it gets us to the same place. All right, thank you. 
Next, we have Mark. If I could just uh, wrote, clarify for us the, the reason you're asking for the zoning change, what exactly it's uh, allowing you to do that your current zoning would not allow you to do. So it, two things. One, it, it allows us to increase the unit count. Um, right now, a 16,000 square foot lot would only yield 16 residential units. So the dash three, the proposed dash three development allows us to do a development that complies with the, the transit oriented development ordinance uh, mm -hmm. to increase the unit count and then to provide a 50% parking ratio. So that, that really is the, the ask um, to go from a C1 to, to a, a either a B3 or C1-3 uh, as a transit oriented development. So it's not related to the height of the building, it's just related to the density? Well, both, both. We do get, there's a approximately, I'm looking at my cheat sheet here. Um, there's an additional, based on our lot frontage, there's an additional eight feet of building height that's permitted with our proposed development that would not be allowed in the C12. Actually, it's, it's about 15 feet more, but we're only asking for eight feet more oh. than what's a, what the dash. Well, uh, two would get us. Correct. I, to answer the question, again, we're asking for eight additional feet, not a full 15. Correct. Thank you. Stuart? So I had a question for you, Nick, and I don't know if this has already been answered. I very well could have missed it. I have small children running around. Uh, is there an affordable housing component to this project with or without the up zone? So without the up zone, there is no affordable component with the up zone. The 10% affordability applies. Uh, so in this case, it would be six uh, dwelling units. And we've already committed to the alderman's office that those six units would be provided in the building. Thank you, Nick. Kurt. Thank you. I, I just have a, a question I'm curious about. In the building section, I could see lines that showed larger buildings beyond. And in this rendering, it looks like not too far to the north, there's another building. But you're, I was just wondering what our context is, because you were saying you're trying to match the adjacent building that looked like it was one story, but the entire line along that street one story or is this building going to stand five feet in the air with its context low or is there a greater density um that's not represented in these drawings what you're seeing in the renderings is are the buildings directly adjacent to our site but beyond that uh i believe one uh one address is the is the line you see here is a three-story building uh okay. just north of ours and then you, know, you guys are more familiar with this than I am, certainly. And then south of uh, are a couple four and five story buildings. So we're okay, what, about, what about directly across the street? Uh, across the street, so uh, Kitty Corner uh, is a five story building, the apartment building. And then across the street is a two story building, I believe. It's okay. the, the long, I, I think it's a warehouse or manufacturing building. So in other words, this building isn't really out of context and scale to it to its neighbors because there are four and five story buildings, et cetera. Right. In the area. So just showing it locally, but that's true. If I if I backed out, you would see other buildings of this scale in the okay. area. All right, thank you. Mary Ann. I'm just wondering um, how the 21 small businesses, they're mostly um, not chains, minority owned, located on Clark Street will be impacted by this new construction and if they're aware of a potential upzoning. Well, we think they would be positively impacted by the potential upzone because it would add, you know, uh, 56 units of potential customers to the street face. Um, are, it's already a commercial, at least on the first floor, a commercial uh, building. In, in, in theory, we're replacing an existing one-story commercial uh, building with a five-story mixed-use building. 
Um, so we would retain and we, we put some thought into that. This is one st a stretch of Clark Street that we think is, is going to come back from uh, some of the, the impacts of COVID. And we think that there will be um, a viable retail space, not only neighboring space, but space within the building. Um, so we think it'll be a, a benefit uh, to have a, a, a residential on top of the retail component. Noah? Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm must messing with the new button here. Um, can you confirm that it's six units at sixty percent of the AMI, and just state what the market rate unit rent is going to be? Yeah, so you're you're correct. There, there would be six units at sixty percent AMI to meet the requirement of the code. We've already committed to providing those in the building, as opposed to paying the in lieu um, fee for those. So we are providing them in the building. I, I went through the rents previously, but I'll do it again. We're proposing 12 studios uh, between 1,000 and 1,200, 24 one-bedroom units between 1,400 and 1,700, and then 20 two-bedroom units that would be between 1,950 and 2,200. That's the, the market range um, for the, the, the market units. And then just in case anyone is having trouble chatting their questions, um, Stuart, I see you wrote one. So Stuart, you can go next. But then after I, that, you can unmute if anyone's having trouble typing questions into the chat box. But Stuart? I did. Uh, Kyle, Kylie, thank you. I just act, was going to ask, following up on Mary Ann's question, are there existing businesses in that space right now? In the 4511, 4523 space, to be more accurate. Uh, Stan, yeah, yes, do you want to, or Mike? Yeah, yes, there is. Uh, we, we have um, we have two retail tenants uh, still in. We're currently talking um, to try to figure out if there's a way to put them back into the new building. We anticipate the same type of kind of neighborhood tenants as being the tenants that you know we're going to attract with the new building. Um, you know, and we're, we're quite frankly we're concerned with. COVID's effect on retail and, you know, so if anybody, you know, has any ideas of tenants that, you know, are looking at new space in that neighborhood, you know, we, we are open to bending over backwards to accommodate, um, you know, most types of neighborhood tenants for the space. Dan? Sorry, also I have a problem with my, my mute button. Um, do we know what the square feet's gonna be on these uh, apartments from like the studio to one bedroom to two bedrooms? I would assume that you'd have different square feet, you know, per- yeah, it varies, but Bill, can you work through the matrix that you provided? So, on, you know, I should be prepared for this question, certainly, but on average, we're about 680 square feet across the entire building. Uh, the two beds are on average about 850 square feet. The one beds are about 650 square feet. And the studios will vary, uh, you know, the, as Nick said, there's 12 of them. Um, and they are anywhere be just around 500 square feet. But on average, as I said, if you took an average of all of them, uh, about 680 square feet total. Ken? Sorry. Yes, thank you. Um, so, sorry, I heard you mention something about other five-story buildings. The only other five-story building I know of is at 4420 North Clark. What were the other five-story buildings you were mentioning? Uh, well, I didn't mention another five, but you're right, the one that's uh, Kitty Corner. And then if you go down south, there's a four-story condo building. And then um, I think the building that I was being asked about is this one right here. And that's a three-story building, I believe. Sorry, we're, oh, on the uh, yeah, north just, side. I think it's, it's one or two doors uh, away from our property. Okay. All right, but the only other five-story building that we know of is at 4420, correct? Correct, that I'm aware of, yes. 
I mean, you know, you can go further down Clark, both north and south, and and see more. But in that area, you're absolutely right. Yeah, I know there's some north of Lawrence for sure, um, but I don't know of any others at five stories. Um, do you know what the other heights are? I'm sorry. I, I <laughs> this is really getting in the weeds here, but I um, would you happen to know what the other heights of the closest um, other buildings in the uh, in the near area are? I, you know, I don't, you know, dimensionally, I, I can only assume that, you know, there's a sort of a typical sort of height that, you know, one would do, you know, the, the typically the first floor is going to be 13 to 14 feet from grade to the retail level. And then you're going to have basically 11 to uh, 11 feet from floor to floor. And so I'm not really good at the math, but, you know, that gets you to 44 uh, ish uh, on yeah, the high side. 50 right. Of, right depending on how tall you are, that's right. Okay, thank you. Next. Michael? Hi, I was just asking on the chat about uh, any incentives or concessions. Uh, what are, are there actual intentional um, offers being made for current uh, commercial spaces there? I, I do a lot of landlord work in my job and I know it's a totally different world now with in the commercial setting especially. So. Uh, if you're, if the intention is to bring some of the folks back, I really need serious incentives. So have those, have those already been extended or have they been considered by the de developer yet? So, you know, we have extended them pretty much to all of our tenants in your neighborhood and all of the neighborhoods around there. Um, you know, it's a little early to be actively marketing to tenants for this building. Um, our existing tenants, you know, we have offered, um, you know, not only concessions to move into this building, but we're, we're looking at options to, you know, take them off site during construction to bring them back. Um, you know, to be perfectly honest, I mean, we're, we're, we're worried about, you know, retail and, and the, the commercial landscape for the next, you know, 12, 18, 24 months. And, you know, it's unknown what happens after it. Um, you know, but we, we are taking the position with all of our tenants now, and depending on what the landscape is when we're ready to deliver this space, um, you know, we, we want a good tenant that's going to be there for, you know, 10, 15, 20 years. You know, we'll, we'll accommodate anything in the short term to get through, you know, the current crisis. David? Yeah, um, I was wondering um, who the neighbors are that are living in that immediate neighbor, in that in that area, um, if they were consulted and what they think about like a five-story building in their neighborhood. Um, I'm quite a bit east of where this is. So I, when I think of Clark Street, I think of uh, one-story um, businesses. So five stories seems a little high. But I, my question is about like, what, what do the neighbors think? So we, we met with the uh, Clark Street Block Club um, and I believe someone uh, from that organization is participating tonight. So I don't wanna put words in anybody's mouth. Um, one of the initial concerns coming out of the Uptown Development Partners meeting that we had back in, I wanna say November, December of 2019 um, was how our building would impact just the, the general uh, residential neighborhood to the east. And what we did in response to that is we're providing a full 30 foot setback, rear setback for the residential portion of our building. And that was done again specifically to uh, mitigate any type of impact that we would have on the neighbors to the east. But also, as Bill mentioned, there are uh, a handful of three, four, uh, and at least one other five-story building within about a two block uh, radius of our property. Um, so it certainly wouldn't be the first, and maybe on this uh, stretch, the 4,400, I'm sorry, the 4,500 block of Clark, but not the immediate area. Can I also add to that too, that the building itself, again, at the second floor is set back at a minimum of almost 12 feet. Mm -hmm. So the intention is that, that that retail facade that you, you know, the, or that elevation rather that, you know, you may be very well aware of is maintained. And so there's really no change to that. Um, even some of those taller buildings are right on the, 
the lot line itself. So, you know, we, we try to make, uh, take provisions to uh, soften that. Dan, were you trying to speak still? There's a little bit of feedback on the mic. Okay, next we have Mark. Mark Zipper. Yeah, I got my question answered. Okay, Thanks. great. And next we have Jason. There you go. Can you hear me now? Yes. Um, well, you know, I was, I live two and a half blocks from this development and uh, frequently, I mean, I'm frequently up and down Clark, but I was particularly interested in just kind of refreshing my recollection on how tall some of these buildings are. And, you know, the 4,500 uh, block of Clark, I mean, I don't know, um, if, if some of those are considered just four stories, but you know, these, I was surprised how tall they were. There's a lot of them. Um, and and so, you know, when I looked at the, the height in comparison to some of these other buildings, I mean, some of them are demo or some of them are falling in on each other. And I think it's hard to, to maybe compare, um, but uh, I certainly thought it fit within um, that particular area. It may not fit within other areas of the ward, um, but, but, you know, we have a big difference in, in some of the buildings in a variety of parts of this board. Um, and then going down, looking at the Jackie Taylor Black Ensemble Theater, um, and then new development that's going to go, that's going in at, uh, what's it, 40, 4410, 4510? Um, they all seem to be cut from the same cloth, and it seemed to make a lot of sense. That's all I had. Mark. Thank you. Um, so I, I just had one more question. Uh, so I, I did live in this area. Uh, I, I moved out uh, about six years ago. Uh, I lived on Magnolia off of Lawrence. And what was just being commented on by Jason uh, kind of speaks to me a little bit in terms of that Clark Street is, is a commercial area and it seems to be and as a, a member of the business community, usually development of, of residential surrounding businesses benefit the businesses uh, and, and ends up uh, being a, a good move. <clears throat> Plus, as, as uh, Jason also mentioned, the opportunity is there to create a new sense of energy for the street. So I found it a little bit curious today that uh, prior to this meeting, there was a, a last minute statement of opposition that came through from uh, a number of the uh, businesses that are alongside uh, this area on Clark Street. And uh, specifically that, that they thought that this would establish a precedent um, for further major upzoning, which I'm not sure necessarily is uh, harmful to the area, but I, I was curious about you know, how it is that you would address the concern uh, and, and what it is that this is doing positively for the area uh, versus uh, concerns that are being raised that, that somehow this is going to be a detriment toward uh, the, the actual nature of the area, which, which Jason seems to be outlining. And, and my memory is, is that with the development, especially of the theater and, and other things that have popped up uh, just south of Lawrence, it, it seems like this is a, a commercial street that's very different than uh, Beacon and, and other streets in the in the neighborhood. Um, Mark, I could probably answer uh, that. Uh, so the zoning process we've had, it's been for about nine years, and and there are some people who believe that if an up zone occurs in one parcel, that that sets the stage for a lot of up zoning. Um, I purposely created a process so that um, there's feedback, uh, especially for projects over $10 million. It's, it's each process is looked at alone. And so if, if there is an upsurge in zoning, it's because both developers are coming forward to uh, present and the zoning development committee 
is agreeable to upzone. So it's that that's the only way it occurs. It, it but just upzoning one area does not mean uh, that's that the whole area is going to be upzoned. That that's the job of the zoning committee to to determine that. Thank you, Alderman. That that's what I had understood originally. So, but I, I read that line and was just curious how how that fit into the context of this. And I appreciate the explanation. So it's it's actually a separate. Each one is individual based upon what it is that it's adding to the community and benefit to to the street. Martin. Yeah. Um, I have been concerned about the scale of this project and the number of stories in particular. <clears throat> and I'd like to correct some statements that have just been made. Uh, this would be the only five story building on the entire four block stretch of Clark uh, between uh, Montrose and Lawrence, except for 4420, which is close to Montrose. Well, it's mid block. Uh, and there are only three or four four story buildings. There are none on the east side of the street until you get to 4717 um, and 4421. So you have to go a block to the south or two blocks to the north. The only four or five story buildings on this stretch of Clark are 4420, 4421, 4650, and 4717 to 47. I, I surveyed this today to make sure I had my information right because I had missed the fifth floor at 4420. Thank you for clarifying that. Mark? Hi, I, uh, uh, this question res relates to the, um, the, uh, the signature pages that we got today. Um, how long has, and, and fill me in, I have lost some of this, but how long has the Clark Street Neighbors Block Club been around? We have the representative from Jeff. Yeah, I'm sorry, James. I didn't know if you were uh, responding on my behalf, but yeah, uh, since um, a few months, two to two to three months since the beginning of the summer, we met, um, and Nick or James, I don't know if you have your calendar open with the MCZ originally, um, but I believe it was the beginning of August, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, what are the uh, our boundaries like Clark Street, Montrose, up to Lawrence? Exactly. Okay, have you got? Do you guys have any formal members? We have we have formal members, and I will um, give sort of the the background and acknowledgement that forming a block club. Um, amidst the environment that is is obviously all upon us right now is is a unique challenge um, and obviously under uh, much more ideal circumstances we would have liked to been able to um, been active in a different way within the community I can give you mark at least um, a scope of the members and obviously this is growing and I think there's a few um, highly interested parties in the uh, uh, non-panel q a as well um, but it ranges from folks that have been in the uptown neighborhood in particular um, from one to I think even three, four, five uh, years, if not a little bit longer. Myself, uh, my wife and I moved to uptown um, last, last May uh, and into June. So just to give you some scope there, um, I have also walked the, the block um, between Wilson and Montrose quite a bit. Uh, and, and completely understand, I think, and on behalf of, of the Clark Street Associate, Neighbor Association, um, that five stories um, in particular is a little bit higher than, than what we've seen consistently with more three and four story buildings. Being new as both um, a member of this committee, committee since, since the Howard Brown last meeting, but also um, as the Clark Street Association, I don't know that I can really give too much context for why four versus five stories is such a significant impact on either the residential or commercial side. So I am certainly open and, and like to learn more about that. Having talked to some of the business owners, um, one, one in particular uh, this afternoon, I, I got the sense that the information conveyed in some of the uh, petition was not entirely accurate with the presentation that we've seen tonight in terms of 
the layout of the units, the distribution, uh, even so far as rental versus um, condo. So uh, I probably answered more questions than you just asked me, but um, wanted to give you, you know, as much context as, as I could. That's, that's great. Thank you. Um, James, I assume that um, the normal zoning up zone notices were sent out to uh, uh, people in the area, like whatever radius around that area. Yes. And Nick uh, was probably the person who sent that out. Okay. All right. That's all I've got. Jason. Um, well, Marty was talking about, you know, there's been talk about four story and five story buildings. I was concerned. I was curious to see if there was an indication of what the, 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 the relative, what the heights were of those buildings. I mean, because, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't, I mean, I, 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 I litigate, I don't build houses and things. Um, so, but I do know that, that sometimes things can be considered a certain number of stories and still fit within certain parameters. And those are some unique properties with some very historic uh, backgrounds, but um, I don't know. What do you, do you know that information, Marty? Sorry, is, is that me? Yes. Jason, talking to me? What's yes. the question? Yes, if that's you, you. Yeah, I'm sorry. If, if you knew, if you had an idea of what some of the heights of those buildings were, because they looked pretty tall to me. I just didn't know how many stories, but. Well, uh, Bill Hornoff, I think it was, indicated that the uh, rule of thumb is it's 11 feet per story. <clears throat> Excuse me, and there aren't any significant deviations that I've noticed along the street. So uh, when we say that almost all the buildings in these four blocks are one, two, or three stories, we're saying that they're up to maybe 34, 36 feet at the most. This and building then, would be 58. Right. Sure. And then this, and then they then they add on whatever ornamental features are on the various buildings, correct? Well, if they have a parapet, something like that. There's not, not very much of that on Clark. Okay. Jason, yeah, we'll, maybe I can fill in here a little bit just to walk you through. It might help you. I happen to have Google Maps up. So 4410 is the old one-story building, which is currently in the process of being rebuilt. And I believe that's going to be a four or a five-story building. There are two buildings on the 4400 block that are... Uh, four stories or greater. There's a condo building. It's the gray one on the east side, which is four stories. I don't have the exact address. Actually, it's 4421. And then 4420 across the street is five stories plus ornamentation on top. It probably makes it closer to six. The public storage building is a little over three stories. It is a warehouse building. Um, and then Black uh, Ensemble Theater, as you know, is a, a relatively tall building, although certainly not five stories. And then as you move forward, as I go up Google Maps, uh, the, uh, the next cluster of large buildings uh, would be the Issel Building, which is at the corner of Wilson and Clark. And then as you pass the um, strip mall, then you get to the condo buildings that are at Leland and uh, Clark, and then of course, 4747 North Clark, which is a very large building, which goes all the way up to Lawrence. And as referenced by uh, the architect, there are also a large number of built, the number of tall buildings as you go north past Lawrence as well. Most of those are over five stories. Okay, that, that comports with my recollection. Uh, I don't a week ago. agree with that. Um, the, the 4747 building where Jeff lives doesn't go up to Lawrence. There's a three-story building in between. Stu, I just surveyed this today. Yeah, no, Marty, I'm sorry. I wasn't meaning to say the building goes to Lawrence, but it goes from in the middle of the block from Leland towards Lawrence. Sure. I'm just, I'm literally driving Google Maps as we speak. So I'm just basically <laughs> following the buildings. Well, I did it this the afternoon and I agree with most of what you said. Okay, <laughs> thanks, Marty. Sorry, the condo building at Leland and Clark is four stories. I'm looking at it right now. Right, that was what Mark was asking. Mark Zephyr. I also want to add. There's some questions about the uh, notices, zoning notices. Uh, 
Nick, I'm not sure, or maybe Tressa, I'm not sure exactly the timing. Do the notices, I know the, the city zoning uh, um, committee requires notices to go out. Do we wait until after it goes through this process first? So yeah. they, they, they're required to send out um, notices when they actually apply for an upzone. Usually folks don't apply for an upzone until it's passed through the community process. Okay. And that's, and that's correct. It's a 250 foot legal range that'll be sent within five days of filing for a zoning change application, presuming we're able to successfully complete the community review process. We find that when um, developers do that before the community process, uh, members of the community get very upset. So we do this first. Jeff? Yeah, it, it was discussed. You can um, okay. move on past. Thank you. Thank you. Ken? Did you still want to ask a question? Ken Goodman? Yes, thank you, Kylie. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I was just uh, uh, texting with my neighbors to the north and the south, and I live across the alley from the proposed development. I live on 4516 Dover, and the development, of course, is 4511 to 23. And I know that, uh, I think it was Nick that just mentioned that the notices didn't go out yet, but then didn't he say that the notices were sent? Because I didn't get a notice and neither of my neighbors did either. So I'm just trying to- and, and Notices have not been sent because they have not applied for a zoning change yet. That was a, I think the, okay. the alderman had answered something um, that, that hadn't happened yet, but when they do apply for a zoning change, those notices will need to be sent. Thank you, okay. That was, that was a little unclear. And so we're talking about the only, the only five story buildings again in the area are at 4420 and then north of Lawrence, correct? Correct. Okay, thank you. Mark? Um, is that me? Isn't the one south of Leland though? No, I think that's four stories. Southwest uh, corner is four stories, so. I answered that. Uh, my question back to maybe uh, Tressa, that is zoning notices. I, I, I get the process like after after this, should this be approved that the zoning notices go out? Um, how do neighbors like in the area find out about this? I think that's where the confusion is because they think that a zoning notice triggers like people to get involved that they have to do something. And really it's kind of after the fact. Right, so that's why throughout our process, we always use the block clubs. We send out information in our newsletters. We have it on our website. That's the way we get neighbors involved. Uh, and we make sure that the, any developer that comes meet with, meets with the neighborhood group um, before um, it comes to this committee in particular. And some, some don't even come to this committee when they're asking for zoning changes. Okay. So that's how the community gets involved in the first place through a lot of it. And then usually the final step is the, um, is, is when, uh, after it's gone through the community process, then they actually apply for the zoning change. And that's when those notices, notices go. go out then. Right, I just wanted clarification because I'm getting a number of questions and I wanted to think about it myself. So yeah, we try, to, we try to make sure that by the time anyone receives one of those notices, they already know about the project, they've already discussed it, it's already been, you know, discussed throughout the community. So it's okay. not a surprise. Okay. Thank you. And then, like I said, just to double check that there's no one from the committee who hasn't asked a question yet who has not been able to add themselves to the list using the chat. Is there anyone from the committee that had a final question that wasn't able to message in the chat? Okay, so Charles. Hey, I was gonna say, Kylie, you have two more, it looks like. Yes. Oh, um, so Charles? it's nitpicky, but it's regarding the yellow coloring on the accents. Is that set in stone? 
I'm sorry, I don't mean to laugh, but uh, you know, to be quite honest, I'm probably the only one in this Zoom meeting right now that likes that color. <laughs> I like <You're> it. <laughs> Raise your hand if you love the color. So, so honestly, um, it's your work. You can you've seen that the the building changed a little bit. Um, the word energy was used earlier, and I, I love that term. And so we're we're trying to make it a, a you know young modern building, and and you know the yellow is you know one way to do it. There are others. Sure. And just one quick follow-up question, if I could. Um, it's got a lot of glass, and it, it's a rental building, right? Yeah. Are there going to, when you build the inside out, will there be window treatments included? Yes. Because that's expensive for people. It, the, the glass is expensive, and the window treatments are expensive, and they are they are included. We, you know, we generally build a a smaller, more affordable unit. We found that, you know, a lot of glass and high ceilings, you know, that helps. makes it, yeah, it helps, but you know, it's expensive and you absolutely, the, the, there needs to be window treatments. We put them all in because we'd like them to be uniform. You know, we are in the long-term ownership of, you know, these buildings. We're your neighbors mm -hmm. up and down uptown. Um, you know, we, we build a quality product that, you know, we intend to keep for, you know, our time horizon is 10, 15, 20 years. Excellent. Okay. Is there anything on the roof or like a green roof or anything? There is. Roof I didn't make the last meeting. There is. So we, we have added a small roof deck. The development of that is to be determined, but, you know, the idea is to kind of create more outdoor space for, for the people who live in the building. So there's a, a roof deck that runs the the length uh, that's set in uh, 15, 20 feet off of either. And, and we've also, not to interrupt, but we've also designed a, a, a green wall uh, in the alley, um, you know, kind of like just that. to keep in yeah. line with, you know, what's going on with the street to the east of us. But, you know, we, we, we thought that that would be a nice feature. Agreed. Thank you, guys. Patrick? Yeah, I mean, I was just kind of wondering what the process is for places that really aren't part of a block club. This is a very new block club, and it was initiated at a time when it's more difficult to engage with people. So I'm not sure how many people were even aware the block club existed. How did they reach out to people? Um, and, and those types of questions. I think it might be good for the block club themselves to answer that um, for Clark Street. But in general, um, we have pretty much everybody is either in a block club now. It wasn't always like that, but uh, pretty much is in a block club right now or is represented by someone. So, um, I mean, right. But then what, what, what block club owned this area before this new block club started? Well, so Dover, Dover Street were the ones that we went to because they were the closest. So, wow. yep. So, um, and then Clark Street decided that would be like, let's say Magnolia Malden, let's say Malden wanted to split off or maybe um, Racine wanted to start their own block club, you know, things like that happen. So I understand. Yep. Yep. So Clark, Thank you. yep, absolutely. Did that answer your question? Uh, except for the, you know, how they reached out, yes, which would be a black club that would have to answer that. Exactly. For us, I'm happy to give a little bit of context if you like. I don't know how far off the Q&A trail you want to get, so you tell me. I think that's fine. Go ahead. Certainly. So, um, I, Patrick, I appreciate the question, too, because um, up until uh, six to seven months after we actually moved here, uh, we were effectively unaware of being in a block club uh, as well. In the entirety of the time that, that we've been here, um, we haven't been approached. And I guess I, what I imagine is similar to a wide variety of the non-panelists um, were either uh, some level of blissful uh, unaware or either unaware and, and inactive. And certainly um, the context for creating uh, one of these clubs amidst um, a pandemic where you can't really even introduce each other door to door I, I, is completely understandable and appreciated. Um, I know that there's commentary or at least members of the community in the um, block south of where we are uh, that are looking forward to becoming part of, of the community and, and that we're super excited about that. Um, 
as far as outreach, there was a flyer. Uh, you'll have to forgive my timeline. I, I want to say around February um, that was more or less plastered as not actually from us as the block club, um, but that was sort of the impetus to creating the, the uh, association because we were, again, uh, not aware that we were like technically part of one, um, which again is certainly on, on us as well to um, maybe not proactively searching that out. Um, so we've sent a few emails, we have had an initial uh, outreach to, to some of the community and then um, connected, as I mentioned, with the Alderman and CZ developers. So I certainly don't want to um, give the impression that we've been on knocking on everybody's doors because obviously that's something that, that unfortunately we cannot do right now. Um, but I can certainly speak for, for the members um, board as well that uh, we're very excited about the uh, active outreach that, that we are hoping to do shortly uh, that will, I think, have to be digital for quite some time, unfortunately. And this is a, a zoning process where, because it's over $10 million, had Clark Street uh, Block Club not existed, it would have gone to Dover. And then Dover would make their decision, then it would still go before the entire 46 word zoning development committee. Ken, did you want to be on the list for questions? Okay. Oh, oh that's you, it. I just get it oh. Sorry, okay. I've just been texting back and forth with some other uh, members and trying to uh, trying to get this. So I was just reading right now from uh, Jason DeVore about discussions with Clark Street folks have been having conversations about a block club for I believe two or more years. Emails were exchanged. So um, Jeff, I think you had mentioned um, the, the petition and there was like you had an issue with it. Um, could you, I'm, I'm just wondering what's, um, what was the issue with the petition? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Ken. I, um, I, I don't know that the issue is necessarily with the petition, um, like in its, uh, in the, in, under the fundamental idea that like, I'm certainly not opposed to petitions of this kind. Um, in fact, I think it's a, a good voice for the community to have. The initial frustration that I had was in talking to one, in, one business owner in particular on our block um, who actually has a cousin that is um, one block south, so just a little bit north of this particular development. Um, the, the understanding that I had from, from asking him about it was that the information shared with him was, was more along the lines that these were going to be uh, $100,000 to $200,000 condos and that the um, concern presented as interrupting a, uh, what I think was voiced as a vibrant, but I think what we've all sort of highlight on the call is that unfortunately it is not um, yet again a, a super vibrant part of the block um, was was a bit misconstrued. So I think there's appropriate concern for the safety of the neighborhood and certainly um, it's something that we want to be entirely conscious of. Um, I know there was another concern about congestion so that hopefully has been addressed with um, some, some details in the building. But again, I guess to summarize and, and I, completely appreciate that I am not, um, you know, reading a written statement or anything like that. So I'm certainly not trying to e even indicate that, that I want to be the voice of someone or, um, you know, that given uh, this particular presentation that they would vote in yay or nay. Um, but the, what was communicated back to me as far as how the, how the petition was um, referenced was not, not as accurate um, with the, with the, presentation we were just given. Okay, well, did, have you taken a look at the petition? I mean, I'm looking at the uh, uh, the four points here. If there's something specific in the four points that somebody uh, um, has an issue with or whatever, we can we can talk about that. Um, and, and just to, to fill out things a little bit, originally, um, uh, Kylie mentioned, and, and Alderman Kaplman as well, of course, that Dover Street was uh, uh, was requested to have this meeting it was March 30th and it was right at the height of the pandemic and people were, were scrambling because uh, Dover Street needs to talk to so many people face to face. We asked to uh, delay it and there wasn't a particular, there was not a zoning proposal at that point. So we basically said when there's a zoning proposal, we'll talk about having a meeting and the next thing we know we heard 
after the fact that these two September meetings um, occurred with with Clark Street neighbors. And it, believe me, we're all for the Clark Street neighbors getting together and and having uh, having discussions and everything. But you know, we have these you know 21 people and you know a lot of bus uh, businesses for um, within this petition who uh, who talked about like not uh, not having been uh, been approached. Um, sorry, one last thing. Um, we door knocked. I, I think I think this information has gone out. We put on Facebook and whatever. Just got a few last bells. But we we door knocked and uh, <clears throat> um, uh, spoke with people over the last uh, few days uh, <clears throat> on Dover Street, and we basically had an absentee vote. And the results of the vote are fifty four against the rezoning and four in favor. So just wanted to uh, summarize that. Thank you, Ken. So we have one more question from the committee. Chester, that'll be you. Chester, I believe you, you are. Hear me? There you go. Yes, we can hear yeah. you. Yeah, I'm, I'm normally uh, pretty pro, pro everything, but I, I took a ride down the street yesterday and I said, you gotta be kidding. That, that building would be so out of character for the area. I don't live near there, but I, I know that it would be a, it would, it would be a start of changing, changing the area. Those are all low, you know, low density, low height buildings. And this thing would stick out like a sore thumb. So I'd, I'd be very cautious about uh, making sure you get full input for people who live along in that area. It's a, it's a, it's, it's something to be careful with. That's it. Thank you, Chester. And that is all of the committee questions. Okay. So now, um, now we'll take questions from our attendees. Uh, so our reminder is to please click the raise your hand button if you have a question and then Kylie will call on you when it's your turn to speak. And when you're called on, you'll be able to click unmute on your screen. If you have any technology questions, you can write them in the Q and A box. And, out of respect for everyone's time and to ensure that we get to as many questions as possible, uh, please make sure that you stick to short and direct questions. Thank you, Alderman Kappelman. We'll now go through attendee questions. And first up is Jackie Taylor. Good evening. Good oh. evening. I I am the owner of the Black Ensemble Theater, as many of you may know. And uh, I have quite an investment, uh, building a $20 million theater. And um, we own the property across the street. And we are building a 50, making a $50 million investment in building our free to be village, which will have a um, an education center for the performing arts, for theater, dance, and music for ages two to 102. Um, restaurant, uh, a technology and film center. And I promised the city council when I went before them in uh, the creation of the Black Ensemble Theater that the purpose of it is to build the mission of the Black Ensemble Theater outside of the theater. And the mission of the Black Ensemble Theater is to eradicate racism. I have lived in Uptown for 35 years. And for me, this community was the perfect community to house a cultural center where people would be free to be. We're building artist lofts affordable artist lofts for artists because it is my belief when artists move into a community, it becomes a different kind of, of inclusive and equity community. So I have a very strong investment in this community, especially on Clark Street. And I wonder why 
uh, if there is a Clark Street Black Club, that one of the major foundations of this street was not invited to the party. I live at 4517 North Beacon. So I, I, I want to know how do we get involved in the Beacon Street Black Club and the Clark Street Black Club? This was supposed to be part of a master plan for Clark Street, where Black Ensemble Theater would create a cultural corridor that is designed by Studio Game and with buildings that perpetuated inclusivity, uh, different ethnicities, different cultures, and provided a foundation for a community that represented anti-racism and living together in, in peace, harmony, it was to be a prime example of that. So my concern now is that we've committed $70 million to this vision of the free to be village because we want to build a community. We want to build a community where people work together, live together, and are free to be whatever they want to be without oppression, without prejudice. It's an artistic community because that is what the arts are about. That is the foundation of the arts. So my question is first of all, how does this, where is our master plan? How does this fit into the master plan? And are we all interested in building buildings or are we interested in building a community? Thank you, Jackie. And I'm a huge fan of Black Ensemble Theater. Um, so uh, you, you've, you've had this incredible plan and I've seen it before. Do you have ideas about uh, uh, businesses that support the arts, especially the African-American community? Um, do you, have you had some discussions with some other groups that might be interested in coming here? We have had discussions with several artistic groups uh, within all communities because this is supposed to be an inclusive community. So we have hired a, a person who is in charge of seeking out those artists who are ready to build, who are ready to um, bring to the community the kind of spirit that we need here. And uh, uh, so it's, it's an extensive plan that has been in the makings since 2006. Uh, so, Yes, we, we have done a, a lot of work uh, and spent a lot of money in, in moving this initiative forward because I believe in my community. I've been here a long time and I understand what this community is all about and how we can change it uh, to make it into the kind of community that does not contain the poverty and the violence that it contains. And uh, so, yes, we, we have been working, we have been working extensively and we have put a lot of money into it. So of course, I'm very concerned and I'm very passionate about it because it, it's, a, I, 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 the developers, hey, right on. I, 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 I want to see uh, movement also, but I want it to be the kind of movement that's going to fit in with the kind of initiative that we're trying to make in this community. Okay, well, I have a, a couple of thoughts. Um, one is that uh, just less than a week ago, I 
did a bicycle tour with Commissioner Maurice Cox. He's the uh, commissioner for the Department of Planning and Development. And we went to Long Clark and he was, uh, he was very impressed with that street. And I also pointed out Black Ensemble Theater and I said, uh, he's from Detroit. I said, you're not a true Chicagoan until you meet with Jackie Taylor, uh, Black Ensemble Theater. And I talked about your mission. Um, so we, uh, he has agreed uh, with me and uh, my neighboring alderman to uh, use TIF funds to do a retail study uh, for Clark Street from Montrose all the way up to Lawrence. So we wanna see, see that happen. And I know Maurice Cox wants to meet with you, Jackie, to build on that vision that you have, because I think it's an incredible vision that we des desperately need on the north side. But my other question is maybe to the developer. I mean, do you have any ideas? Is there anything you could do to help build on this vision? Yeah, absolutely. And uh, again, this is Nick Fatikas, uh, the project attorney. Uh, we'd be happy to work with Ms. Taylor and again, the uh, local block club and any of the neighboring block clubs on finding the right or complementary tenants um, to further that vision. Uh, I think it's exciting. We hope that our um, proposal and our project are viewed in a much smaller light, but a, a similar light is trying to improve and uh, jumpstart the, the development uh, in the area. But if there's a, a conversation and, and leads that we could have to get to potential tenants. Um, I think you mentioned uh, minority owned businesses, whether it's an artist studio or a restaurant or something along those lines, uh, we're wide open to that. We'd, we'd love the, the inroad um, to be a part of the, of the, the larger vision. Jackie, this is, this is Mike Lerner. Um, first off, you know, you, I appreciate everything you've done for the community. Your building you know, is really what allowed us to take the risk to design not only a modern building, you know, in that area, but also to spend, you know, design a building, you know, that is, you know, detailed and, and you know, a, a lot more expensive than a, than a normal neighborhood apartment building would be. And, you know, not only are we interested in being, you know, long-term members of your community, you know, we, we, we appreciate it. We want to help. We want to be, you know, we want to be a part of it. And, you know, if, you know, our reputation, you know, we do everything we can in the neighborhoods that we develop in. We're not just in, we are into building buildings. Obviously our goal is to build a profitable project, but we're more concerned about tenant retention. And, you know, that is the most important part financially for a landlord is to be able to develop a product in a building that your tenants are happy enough to stay for five or six or seven years or when they want to upgrade from a one bedroom to two bedroom they upgrade within the building um we would love to do anything we can to help with your mission you know we have this space here we have some additional space on clark um you know if you have you know any ideas or any needs or, you know, I'll, I'll shoot you my contact information um, offline. I mean, if there's anything that we can do to help, uh, we fully support your mission. And quite frankly, you know, we think that this stretch of Clark Street, you know, for a number of reasons has been neglected. And, you know, without people with a little bit of vision and a little bit of risk, it, you know, it, it, it doesn't turn. And, you know, we are very appreciative to your site you know, we think that, you know, it, it generally improves about a five block radius. We, yes, we need to talk. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll have, uh, I'll have my, uh, I'll shoot you over my contact information uh, uh, when we're offline. Okay. Jackie, I don't mean to, to jump in over anybody else. Charles already sent this in the chat. Uh, I'm Stuart Berman. I'm the VP of Beacon Block Club. Uh, please, by all means, I will shoot you my contact info offline as well. Uh, we are at on Facebook at Beacon Block Club in the groups section of Facebook, and that's the primary way to get a hold of us. But we would love to hear from you, love to work with you on uh, Beacon. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. I uh, Jackie has my phone number on speed dial, and I have hers. <laughs>
I will, I will take you up on that, Alderman Kaplan, and I will find you somehow and uh, get that information. <laughs> I'll just add super quick because I think, um, you know, it's been said, but we certainly can't say enough. Jackie, I think the, the thing that I would relate with most um, in your commentary is the passion that it, that it, where it comes from. Um, and so I think we can all certainly appreciate that and the desire for a um, an inclusive, uh, artistic or not, right? Mm -hmm. but our, certainly artistic community. Um, and I would say certainly on behalf of the Clark Street Block Club, so much of why uh, we are here, just even as a, um, you know, a child organization is because of shared passion for the community. So I know that, um, again, understandably, this thing came together very, very quickly. Um, so while any miscommunication is certainly, uh, I, I would apologize to the community at large for, but um, I'd reiterate that the the club itself kind of came the impetus was for that was um, a desire to be involved in that same type of community where we really didn't know that that was even available to us in the first place so um, along with all the contact information that I'm it sounds like you're going to be receiving um, for the last 10 to 15 minutes um, we certainly want to make sure that we have a broader voice of, of Clark um, all the way to Montrose uh, included in, in discussions moving forward. Thank you. Thank you so much. Can, can you put my um, email address in the chat so that anyone who would want to contact me can? I can. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. And next we have Loretta. Hello, and this is Loretta Rohde. How are you? Thank you for taking my question. Um, so my question is, because I've lived in the neighborhood um, basically all my life. I'm 38, and I've now I have a nice big family and, and whatnot, and I've loved to see how my neighborhood has grown and changed. Because when I was a child, the only neighborhood association was Dover Street Neighbors, and it slowly has now changed to Maldives Magnolia, and Truman has their own neighborhood association, and Beacon has their own neighborhood association. And I'm super excited that Clark also can input into um, the greater scheme of Sheridan Park and of the whole ward in general. But my question is, um, because it is right now, in a sense, a grassroots um, organization, how, what are the, how many members are there currently who are able to vote on um, this particular project? Lauren, I can follow up with you on exact details. You mentioned it is, it is a grassroots. I don't have the numbers in front of us. I can say that I'm uh, only one here tonight. I know there uh, is a small single, if not like one and a half handfuls of the board, but um, I don't, I don't know the top number, but if your contact is actually in any of these Q&As, then I can follow up with you for sure. Okay, then. So that was in, and my other question is, is that um, are business owners also in part of this block club or is it strictly only the residents that are members? <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, to date, it is it is residents, and I don't think there's any broad opposition. Um, and as I just mentioned to Jackie, I mean the the voice of commercial property owners is certainly something we want to be cognizant of. So um, uh, that that's the status of it today. I, I would add in though that uh, typically all the block clubs are just residents, and then we also encourage our local chambers of commerce to also provide their separate feedback and it and they end up complementing one another oftentimes. Wonderful. And then, so this project goes over a multitude of buildings with the two, between the two addresses. How many storefronts are there currently? And then, and I wanna be clear, there's only one storefront being proposed in this, in this uh, proposal, correct? Yeah, yes and no. We're, we're proposing it as one as it sits today. Um, generally, in, in this type of environment, it likely becomes, you know, a multiple tenant situation. Um, you know, you can find a restaurant or that type of tenant that needs 3,500 feet. Uh, the majority of the tenants in that neighborhood are, you know, half of that or less. Um, you know, I mean, we, we would prefer to see 
you know, a, a handful of neighborhood tenants, it, it, it offsets our risk. Um, it doesn't have us too reliant on the success of one individual business. Uh, but as it sits right now, it's one open space. Okay, thank you. No further questions. Thank you, Loretta. Next we have Robert. Hey everybody, um, thank you for uh, letting me uh, have, uh, partake in this. My name is Robert Salm. I live over in Buena Park, but I am over in that area a lot. And I just want to tell the architects, you have done a great job of articulating the facade of the upper floors. Um, I saw your first proposal. Yeah, you needed work. So you went back and you added a lot of great great uh, fenestrations and balconies. You've done a lot of maneuvering. Um, a shout out to Jackie Taylor. God, I love your theater. Um, you're, you're wonderful and all of your concerns are, are extremely valid. I would like to say that as that this will become a large residential project, there is the impetus to have new people come into the theater. Uh, there'll be a lot more uh, opportunities for, uh, for engagement because you, this property will add quite a few uh, new residents, probably very young people right out of college. Uh, they're, gonna want, they're gonna want cultural activities. And so this project is perfect for this neighborhood. Uh, it's replacing a lot of uh, very bland uh, kind of uh, mid-level wholesale shops that are barely open. Uh, a lot of their, there are a lot of empty, empty storefronts. Uh, so my question though, pertains to the actual architecture of the first floor. And that is, when we look at this building, uh, the, the upper floor is really great. The first floor is awful. It looks like a big brown Lego brick. And I was wondering if there's any possibility that the architects can look at, and I understand this, this works with the retail, how many retail uh, positions you have in there. You're looking at one, perhaps two or three. But is there any way to articulate that, that first floor Clark Street facade a little bit to add some excitement to that building? Like I said, the upper three floors, upper four floors are great, uh, but that first floor is when you're when you're at the pedestrian level, it's brown. It's just a flat brick um, with glass. There's really nothing to it. Just wondering if there could be some uh, change up because right now it's pretty industrial, pretty uh, Soviet era architecture looking. That's my question. Am I? Do I have to answer that? Um, <laughs> yes, you do, Bill. I, I understand, and I think that uh, to Mike's point earlier, the retail is a blank canvas at this point, um, it, and so it 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 probably will fluctuate and its personality will be driven by the, you know, future business people that move into that space. So, you know, I, I think, you know, look, there's a great yellow brick I would love to use here, but, um, you know, I look, the material too, I think is something that we're still looking at. Obviously you saw the original scheme. It's, it's the building is evolving as we go here. Sure. Hey, Bill, just a shout out to back to the Black Ensemble Theater. Take a look, I'm sure you have, but take a look at the context in the neighborhood. That street's pretty desolate. There's not a whole lot of oomph to it. But when you yeah. get to Black Ensemble Theater, that's a great building. They're using natural woods as, a, as part of the facade. They have some setbacks and they've created some green space. I do like how you've maintained this, the trees, those full grown trees that are currently there in the front. Um, yeah, I just, I, what I don't, what I hope that's not going to happen is you're going to fill that with a bunch of like Jimmy John's and, uh, you know, just little, little, little uh, chain places. So what I'm thinking is if you were to create maybe two or three options for that instead of one big retail space, yeah. maybe you would get a nice mix of some local shops. I don't think you, quite honestly, I've looked at what's there now. Most of, those, most of those wholesale shops sell sunglasses and handbags. I don't think you probably want those in your, in your, as part of your development. And you're not going to be actively looking for those kind of retail tenants. But if you make that a little more decorative, if you do something like uh, have some options built in so that if you do get a, a few inter people interested, maybe they've got a couple of restaurants. I don't know how you can vent that. I don't know if you've thought about that. 
but that would be really great to have is some way to have multiple options for smaller tenants uh, that are maybe a little more locally based. Yeah, I understand. Thanks. So if I could just jump in really quickly. On a building this size, and I'm looking at the surrounding buildings, of course, on Google, because how else are you doing it? Um, I, I wonder about the building material staging area. Where, where is that currently? Are you talking about under, through the process of construction? Yes. Uh, so we will stage this on site. Um, the, the, the majority or, or all of the staging will be done in the rear, in the rear of the building and the rear yard setback, and then the garage will be built after the fact. Okay. Typically how this would be done is that the garage space is going to be used for storage of materials, Mike said, and then delivered into the building. This so that there is a circle building, although really nicely done, they're taking up half the street right there. Yeah. I'm sure. And, and uh, Leland. But they are doing a nice job on that building if you've walked by it there. Thank you, Charles, and thank you, Robert. Next, we have Jay Sydney. Hello, thank you uh, for taking my uh, my questions. So I guess I wanted to start with, I, I am a neighbor that lives directly behind this area and who would be impacted uh, by this development. And um, I've heard nothing from anyone on the development side to engage with us and, and trying to ascertain how this would impact us. And I'm curious on a couple of fronts of if you did do any impact studies in terms of how we might be affected by it and that this would directly overlook our backyards, unlike the, the, the five story mentioned down the block, um, we are that building abuts um, other multifamily high rise buildings or at least mid rise buildings, not single family homes. And then on the for the Clark Street people who are up the street, that's again a whole different situation. So have you looked into it exactly how this is going to impact us? And in particular, the garages and the garage space and the access of getting in and out of the existing garages that are on the alley. And then I have another question, but I want you to answer that, please. So we, we have, we've, we've studied shadows and, and, and we've, you know, we, we've, laid out the entire block to make sure that we were not negatively impacting the street. Um, we set the building back additionally, um, you know, out of, you know, out of respect to Dover, um, you know, and, and we did some work on the back um, of the building to make it fit and feel as I understand that this is now the new building that's going to be, you know, looked at. We tried to not just focus on the front of the building. We tried to also focus on the alley out of appreciation to Dover Street. And to be quite honest, you know, we spent about 10 months trying to meet with Dover Street uh, and meet with the community group. You know, we are, you know, we, we, we do not want to negatively impact the community. We are the exact opposite. Um, you know, the, the difference in this building in terms of height and what we're allotted to build, um, you know, is not vastly different. You know, we're talking about about eight feet of additional height that we're asking for relative to what we would build under the current zoning. You know, we are doing the best we can to build the nicest, you know, building that we can afford to build, you know, in this neighborhood, we're trying to improve it. Uh, you know, we understand that, you know, Dover's a residential street. It happens all over Chicago where a residential street backs up to a commercial street. Um, we've really spent a lot of energy and a lot of time, quite frankly, trying to get Dover Street's input, but we've done everything we can, you know, to make this as nice as possible, you know, for, for the people to the east of us. Thank you for that. I mean, and, and uh, as Ken mentioned earlier, I think you now have at least the input from Dover Street in that uh, the overwhelming majority of the people here are not in favor of, of making a zoning change. Um, I, I think that that's a tough knocking on door. I mean, I'm, I'm sure that, you know, it, depending on the way that it is phrased when somebody knocks on your door, I'm not sure that that is actually, um, 
you know, reflective of, of what the community truly believes. I think we have, you know, we, we've surveyed and, and, and we've done a lot of analysis on the block and, you know, the, the, the people that we speak to, you know, this block is, you know, in, in desperate need of, you know, life and energy. And it is a lot of half vacant, you know, half vacant single floor retail. Currently. Right. And, and to sit in, as a long-term now resident of, of Dover Street, and I've put a significant amount of investment in buying uh, the home that I live in and completely remodeling this home. Um, while you might not have uh, invested time in knocking uh, on doors, it would have been appreciated. And the eight feet that you talk about is not being that significant is in fact very significant um, to a, a resident here. The other thing that I would add, and I've heard a lot about people talking about how desolate this neighborhood is in that street. And I will say that I, I take exception to that. I walk this neighborhood and I bike this neighborhood probably as much or more than a lot of people. And quite honestly, um, the, the people who own the businesses on the other side of me now, I find to be charming people. I, I like the diversity of the people who are there. And in terms of, uh, as someone mentioned earlier about the purse stores and what have you as not being desirable, I, I take exception to that as well. I see all the time those businesses thriving pre-pandemic um, with a diverse uh, array of people who shop there. And I find them uh, welcome to this neighborhood. And I, I would like um, for developers like yourselves and others to consider that and to consider like the Black Ensemble Theater and the vision for the neighborhood before you come asking for zoning changes. Because when you want to invest in a neighborhood and develop it for people of color and for low income people and for artists, the time is to do that not when you need something. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Jay Sydney. Next, we have Carolyn. Carolyn? Second. Okay. Hi, we can hear you. Okay. Well, my question is um, I, a couple of questions. And you've kind of been addressing it a little bit, but I was wondering if, if there is a commercial plan and what types of stores are trying to bring in and what happens if they remain unoccupied. Now, the, this first floor setback, the stores would not be visible from the street. And, and because we have a similar structure at the, at the end of, of, Laura, of Clark Street, with their setback stores, there's only one that's really visible. And those other stores seem to be unoccupied in that 4,700 block with the tall building, the condo building there with the setbacks there. So I'm very concerned that we're gonna have some more unoccupied space for retail. If I can, again, this is Nick Fatikas. Um, to answer the question in two parts, when we initially approached uh, the project, we, we thought that we'd probably have a restaurant uh, type user or, or tenant. Obviously with COVID and the impact that's have had on the, uh, not only the restaurant uh, industry, but also the retail market in general throughout the city, there's obviously some uncertainty as to who the end tenant is going to be. Um, we absolutely, uh, I think Mike had said it earlier, we absolutely would work uh, with some of the local groups to see if there is a tenant or um, a, a lead to a potential tenant, whether it's a restaurant, whether it's broken into multiple spaces, I think is to be determined. Uh, with respect to the setback, I want to be clear that the first floor is, it retains the, the typical front setback up against the streetscape. It's the second, third, and fourth floors of the building that are set back to reduce the massing on Clark Street. So the, the presence, and I think Bill spoke to it a little bit earlier, or the intent is to align our retail with the neighboring retail buildings uh, to the north and south. Just to reinforce that, the glass for the retail is at the lot line. Okay. That's unclear. That's unclear in the picture that I can see right here. 
Thank you for answering that. Um, it just seems that this is going to be a very dense building also with that many studios and one bedrooms rather than more two bedroom apartments because <clears throat> right down the block over at the old uh, tall <laughs> called the arms I believe it is on, on Wilson we have a it's a multitude many stories of, of single of studios and one bedroom apartments. And I'm not sure that that's what we really need in our, in our neighborhood it, because it becomes very, very dense and it has become more and more dense. And I've lived here for over 35 years and the neighborhood has become so much more dense with parking. Um, most people who live here have a car and sometimes two cars and it used to be open for parking over on Lawrence Avenue and now there's no parking even over there, although there's a, a taxi cab company that parks their cars there all the time. So I'm not sure if we reduce the amount of parking spaces we have, but increase the number of units, then I think the whole neighborhood is going to be affected by that negatively. Well, I, I can speak to the first part of the question. Um, and I think that without speaking for Clark Street, they had a concern as well over the type of unit mix. So after our initial meeting, we went back and, and reworked and reorganized the units within the building. And where we had initially proposed only eight two bedroom units, there was a, a request, frankly, to try and increase that number. And we went from eight units originally proposed to now 20 units uh, at, at the two bedroom size being proposed. Um, and again, we in, in retooling the, the building, we also were able to meet the 50% parking uh, threshold, which although the transit oriented development ordinance allows a further reduction, we think that that 50% mark is where uh, the usage rates, rates will be. I, I tend to agree with you. I think the 20 uh, two bedroom units will probably have, you know, the, the cars where the studio probably won't. Um, that's just based on general making generalities, uh, but to at least have the option to provide a 50% parking ratio was also something we were asked to look at and we were able to do it. Okay, thank you for that. And I don't have any more questions. Thank you. I'll also add that the Department of Planning Development for transit oriented developments actually discourage um, having a lot of parking, they purposely want it reduced. And the idea for that is that uh, if the parking is unused, it adds to the cost of uh, people uh, either purchasing or renting. And so to help bring down the, the cost of renting or the cost of purchasing, they wanna reduce. Typically what we're seeing is under 50% when, when we do one-to-one -one parking in developments, it's typically less than 50% is used. The other 50% remains vacant. Uh, just to add to that, uh, to give some context, you know, and we, we've, we've surveyed in our own properties in Uptown, uh, you know, we, we have 34% of our parking spaces currently occupied. Um, so if there is anybody in the war that is having a difficult time finding parking or that's an issue, um, you know, we, we do have a, a plethora of unused parking in the neighborhood. Thank you, Carolyn. And next we have Cynthia. Hi, my name is Cynthia Asgar. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Thanks. Thank you so much for adding me to the question and answer list. I own 4653 North Clark Street. I have three long-term tenants there. I've owned the building with my husband since 1994, I think. And my husband was actually the more active owner landlord of that building and knew Clark Street much better than I do. Uh, he passed away in February, so I took over being, you know, a much more active landlord and just want you guys to know I also have a graduate degree in public administration. I worked for the city of LA, the city of Anchorage, the city of Chicago, and um, I just am concerned. I would say the people that signed the petition and I was a part of that process are concerned not only with the actual specific plan for that building, but they're concerned with this process 
because unfortunately, I'm sure it was not intended by the alderman or his staff or the developer, but what you have done is completely ignore the minority building owners and businesses that are along those three blocks. And Pat Phelan and I walked those blocks in two days last week. We knocked on every door. We talked to everyone that was there. None of them knew about this plan. And all of them really would like to see development and investment in the neighborhood, but there needs to be more transparency in the process. And actually right now listening to this tonight, I just feel a sense of shock that you guys don't realize how this appears because almost every building and business along those three blocks is minority owned, but many of them have been here 40 or 50 years. Their parents first immigrated here and now it's these adult, their adult children who are still committed to this neighborhood and invested in it. And they have ridden every upturn and downturn in the economy the last 30, 40 years in what was once a very vibrant wholesale market and now is starting to be affected by all the things that are affecting the global economy. But these are very sharp businessmen and women. They are constantly involved in the design process as they design purses, jewelry, um, apparel, constant design changes, and they are experts at global shipping. And this stuff is coming over from around the world into that neighborhood and it's getting sold. And yes, of course they were affected by COVID, but you have there just some solid, solid business people who have been good taxpayers and good citizens this whole time. And you have managed to not inform them and not involve them. And I just have to ask you, you know, Alderman Kappelman and your staff and the developer, why, why would you want to do this process in this way? Because these are people who all want development investment and it would be nothing to really get serious buy-in from them on a really solid plan, just like with Jackie Taylor. And Jackie, I have to say, I just absolutely love your vision. But, um, you know, you guys, I just feel like, wow, this is such an opportunity for you to kind of be real heroes in this neighborhood. And you're kind of, you're really fumbling it to me. I'm sorry, I have to be direct and honest about this because it appears to be really, you're excluding these long-term taxpayers and businessmen who have kept that neighborhood together and are willing to extend their investment in it. So, you know, my question really, I can't argue the plan. It may be, it may make sense now in our current and current environment and economy and with millennials and generation X, Y, and Z. Yes, maybe it's a studio, maybe it's a one bedroom, maybe they don't own a car. You know, for those businessmen along the street, the parking is a curious and serious issue for them because they want customers and all those apartments may bring them more customers if they are right now a mix of retail with their wholesale license. Um, but if boy, those parking, if that street is, par is jammed all the time with residents actually using those parking spaces, their customers are not gonna be able to pull up to the curb and get into that shop and look at all the wonderful things they're selling and buy it. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you may want to actually go back and talk to people. And Pat and I, you know, we spent a few hours, eat the two days we went there, they're very interested. They're very astute. They want development, but it could have been such a much better process than what it's been. And to call, to call a block party, a block club, to call that the Clark Street Block Club or Neighborhood Association, and yet not actually include these people. And it just took a few hours for us to talk to them and get signatures. And really, so I just wanna say again, the concern is not only the specific plan, and I don't know if maybe you couldn't break even with just four floors, so you had to add a fifth floor, it would be interesting to see the financials, but it's also a concern with this process. And you know, that's all I've got really, I just have a comment, but 
I do wish and I do hope that you will be more committed to the people that are actually there and have been there all along. Thank you. Thank you, Cynthia. And certainly that de deserves an answer. Uh, actually, I, you know, every, I allow block clubs to, to create their own parameters about who belongs and who doesn't belong. Um, my personal preference is that block clubs be mainly residents and not businesses. I would rather have the businesses join their local chamber of commerce and that's where their true voice is. So that's, that's my preference, but I will leave it up to Clark Street Block Club to decide how they want to do it. Um, we, we do encourage, and actually the local chambers encourage uh, uh, res, uh, retailers to please uh, 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 take part in our newsletters, read those newsletters, sign up. Uh, uh, there are, uh, get involved in the block clubs, get, uh, email me, uh, we, we wanna be very open. When I look at the process that we use uh, for the 46th Ward, uh, it's, I've been on the city zoning committee for nine years. And I see um, 50 different sets of ways that 50 different aldermen create a process to include uh, the community. Uh, I am the only alderman in the entire city that has projects over $10 million or more that involves the entire ward. And I do that purposely because I believe that large projects like this don't just affect the, that particular block club um, or the neighbors behind it, but it infects the entire ward. Uh, so uh, I, do, I do it that process. And in the nine years I've been alderman, I have always gone with the vote of the entire 46 ward zoning and development committee. And just to make it uh, incredibly ethical, I make sure that no developer is allowed to donate money six months before they make a request to my campaign, nor are they allowed to uh, donate money 12 months after. Um, I've had aldermen come up to me wanting to create uh, the same process, uh, but they frequently don't because it's, uh, they find that it's just way, way too much work. But I believe it's worth it because the community, the 46 ward is an incredibly diverse ward. Um, uh, over 92 different languages spoken here. We have um, areas of high wealth and areas of high poverty just within blocks of each other. And I believe this process allows that uh, to happen. So um, I, I will go down uh, Clark Street and I will encourage these businesses uh, to please sign up for our newsletter so that they can uh, receive information so that they can read the 46 ward master plan that talks about uh, what's happening. And I would encourage them to, to get in touch with the uh, Uptown United, which has told me uh, this past spring that there is a remarkably high rate of, of vacancies along Clark Street. And there's also a high number of buildings for sale. And uh, that's why I'm really pushing the city to create uh, this master plan using TIF money to make this an area that's that's welcoming to all. Alderman, I, might, I wonder if I'm, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Um, I, I just want to say, um, I guess a few things. One, we, we would Cynthia, thank you for your for your commentary because um, I know we just got your your email as well. Um, so we're looking forward to incorporating your your vision uh, and input into the community at large. I think uh, as far as going back to the process and to reiterate some of the things that that Alderman Kaplan has just mentioned, because a lot of these things were were relatively new to us as um, both short and long term residents of, of Uptown. Um, this has been pointed out, I think, in some of the Q and A chat. Um, but I would certainly encourage everyone, both panelists and non, to explore the Alderman's website, Uptown Update. There is a wealth of information about um, development block clubs and the like that um, even until recently, we were not made aware of. Um, and I think that's part of, again, sort of where the organization came from. So as far back as February, um, what I mentioned is a lot of these flyers were posted and that's even before 
again, the construction of the organization. So um, again, Cynthia, I thank you for the, the commentary. We're very much looking forward to bringing that commentary to the forefront. Um, I would also just quickly address, um, I know Nick mentioned very briefly how the, uh, excuse me, how the initial feedback um, was focused uh, for, for some of the development and, and I'll center on the ideas of context and congestion because I know those are uh, some things that have been brought up very frequently tonight. So from the perspective of congestion, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Alderman, but my understanding uh, is that on the entire uh, east side of Clark, um, that is all metered parking. I know at least outside of our block in the 4700 area, um, it's metered on the uh, east side free on Sundays, which, which we very much enjoy, um, and then free on the west side. So as far as businesses that are uh, parking or customers that are parking there today, um, I, you know, I certainly would have to ask some of the, the wholesalers, but I doubt that they're paying uh, permit meter, or excuse me, meters uh, all day, every day. Um, so I don't know that from a business parking displacement, there, there's much concern. Um, but again, that was certainly something we took into consideration and in getting up to a 50% parking spot, knowing having lived in studio and one bedrooms without a car. Um, and I think someone had commented earlier on the, the type of resident um, really across the board that, that uptown is looking for um, being so close to all the public transportation, hopefully. Um, and again, given sort of the lack of, of congestion there today, um, that, that was something that we have highly took under consideration and, and did not um, you know, wanted to make sure it was addressed, but the full congestion of that block was certainly not something that seemed out of place um, or is, is a super high concern. So I did want to um, address that and make sure that, um, you know, you knew Cynthia in particular, that that was something that we had discussed. And the other concept was context. I mean, um, I think it had been mentioned that from a retail perspective and the commercial properties on the first floor, that design is sort of a, a up in the air. And I think there was a commentary around um, the yellow as well. So I think there's certainly some, some bits and components that um, can continue to pop. But um, again, sort of the, the, the process and everything, I mean, there there is a tremendous energy. And Cynthia, you just called it out too from the business owners. Um, so while I cannot speak to the block clubs at large um, and the more of the commercial entities really focused on the Chamber of Commerce, um, I think having been a lot more active in some of those websites that I mentioned, again, would encourage all the, the neighborhood members to actively um, check those out because there's some great information. Um, but context was certainly something that we were aware of um, and depending on what type of tenants we ideally end up coming there, whether it's this building or others, um, hopefully there's also a lot of freedom and um, comfort in the design and, and level of detail that they can bring to the environment. Because as you said, again, um, from minority owned businesses to um, any type of business that comes into the neighborhood, I think it's critical that they feel welcomed, comfortable, um, and can put their own their own taste on that. So um, hopefully in addition to some of James's commentary that, that helps give context to our thought process. Thank you, Cynthia. And then the next question is Dale. Hi, uh, thanks for taking my question. Um, the developer, um, uh, reference some studies that he had done for solar and traffic. And um, I was just wondering if those could be made available to us. I was also wondering about the, um, the impact on the alley. That's a green alley behind the building. And if uh, the heavy construction would have anything to do with that, if that would be a problem. And uh, the people that are behind, directly behind side of the alley. Some of these buildings are pretty old. I mean, our building was built in 1911. And I was wondering if uh, they had any idea about the impact of that building would be, you know, on the foundations of the adjacent buildings and the buildings surrounding it when they do, do when they do the build if it's this, this is approved. Well, I actually I can speak on some of that. Um, one of the processes that we uh, used is that when a, a building does go up, the area residents have contact um, with uh, the construction company so that um, immediate steps can be taken. Um, I live in a three-story um, condominium building 
and directly behind me, a six-story building was built. And actually, the garage is right at, right at the alley. And um, we found that um, if there were actually, we didn't have any issues, but um, uh, with that construction, but um, but we have a process so that if there are issues, there can be an immediate response. Let me also say that as far as the construction process is concerned, we would anticipate that as mentioned before, the garage would be built last. So that means the, the 30 feet within the site, that's 135 feet wide would be the staging, would be where the equipment's kept, where the trucks are parked. Uh, so there shouldn't be any detrimental effect to the alley. The building doesn't have a basement, so we do not anticipate deep foundations here. We, ex we anticipate uh, typical four feet deep spread footings. That's just anticipated at this point, of course. And if I could ask one more question, um, if that's okay, we have a lot of uh, water issues, especially with sewer back on Dover. I don't know if anybody ever travels up, up Wilson, but many times when it rains, we have, I call it Lake Dover at the corner of Wilson and Dover, and uh, our building gets sewage back up, raw sewage back up uh, much of the time. Has any concern or has anything about address, will this tax our sewer system to more um, our, our, our current system adequate? Well, I, I believe our systems will come off of Clark. And so it will be fully separated uh, that I'm aware. We have not done civil work yet, but I expect that all of our services, that is gas, water, sanitary, will all come from Clark and should affect over at all. Um, just a, another point on the sewers, you know, because of the size of the project and the size of the site, we actually have to, we're obligated to put a separate detention uh, tank in, which effectively is a reservoir, which limits the water that goes into the, the public system. Um, you know, so this particular project will be taking all that into consideration. And that's just, again, following up on that, um, that's because the lot's more than 15,000 square feet. So we're at 16,944. So it's a requirement of our building permit to address on-site detention. Thank you, Dale. Next, we have Douglas. Douglas. Hi. Thanks for taking uh, my call. Um, I think this is more of a comment than a question, but I want to reiterate um, what Jackie and Sydney and Cynthia uh, expressed about the concern they expressed about the lack of community. But, and I just want to um, reiterate to the zoning board um, March 30th, the developer had a meeting scheduled with Dover Street neighbors uh, that was canceled due to the lockdown. Um, to my knowledge, Dover Street Neighbors was never contacted again, but I'll let Ken Goldman confirm that later. Um, subsequently, there was a meeting with the new Clark Street Neighbors Association. We still haven't heard how many people were at that meeting. It's kind of nebulous. We don't know how many votes occurred um, when Dover Street Neighbors meets. Those votes are reported. They were voted to, they were reported to the Alderman's office. Um, we know how many signatures came from the 4,500 and 4,600 block of Clark on the petition. We heard how many votes came in through the canvassing this weekend, um, the ad hoc that happened on Dover Street. Those were reported earlier. Um, I just wanna frame those, that timeline and numbers for the zoning board just to kind of get a sense of the broad opposition from the 4,500 and 4,600 block of Clark and Dover Street for this proposed zoning change. Um, and I think um, there are resident owners on the 45 and 4600 block of Clark. Some of them are represented on that petition, the Titsal Cafe, the Thai Uptown, Felix's um, locksmith, they are all resident owners as well as business owners. So, um, and um, it's clear that none of them were uh, contacted uh, by this meeting. 
So um, I just want to emphasize that for the Zoning Board. Sure, and I, I can answer that. I mean, my rule of thumb is that for Dover Street, if there's a request for an up zone, I first contact residents on Dover Street. Um, for Clark Street, if there is a request for an up zone, just with following the golden rule, I believe that I should first contact the residents on Clark Street uh, now that there is a block club. And what I have found, and I purposely did this because I believe uh, block clubs are the strength of, of, of our community. Um, I have found that when there are development, development proposals, it encourages block clubs to start forming. So I can't say this is the reason why it's formed, but if it did, then my plan worked because I, I really believe people on Clark Street should have at least first say on what happens on their own street, just as Dover Street should have first say on what happens on their street. But the, the other piece that I believe is crucial and no other alderman does this in the city is that I have a process so that if a project is $10 million or more, it would go before the entire 46 ward zoning development committee where they weigh in. So for this particular process, if there was no Clark Street uh, block club that existed, and if it only went to Dover Street, <clears throat> and let's say Dover Street said no, then it would still go before the 46 ward zoning development committee and they would still um, make a decision on whether or not uh, to uh, say yes or no for this development. Uh, there are times when uh, the zoning committee supports the local block club. There are times when they don't. Um, the last time the zoning development committee did not support the local block club was my block club. I'm a member of Truman Square Neighbors and there was a proposal uh, by Sarah Circle uh, to uh, build uh, 34 units of affordable housing and uh, 50 uh, shelter beds for the women in their program. Uh, that block club, many, uh, many of them said no, but the 46 Ward Zoning Development Committee stepped back and said, what is good for the entire community? So their decision was what's, what's best for the 46 Ward rather than what's best for the residents living on my block. And um, I, I respect that process. I can Thanks. appreciate that. Um, but I would again emphasize that I, it, it seems like I understand that the Clark Street Block Club is new, uh, but it seems clustered on a block that is two blocks away from this proposed change. And there's and that's why, opposition from the neighboring residents that are directly impacted, including the Black Ensemble Theater, the resident owners on Dover Street, and the business and resident owners on Clark Street. And that's why this process is so good, is because um, this is a decision that's not made by Clark Street Block Club. This is a decision about upzone, uh, upzoning made by the entire, all the members of the 46 Ward Zoning Development Committee made up of many, many different groups all over uh, the ward. And because 25% of the residents living in the 46 ward um, experience poverty, 25% of the uh, zoning development committee represents that group. Uh, because I, I, I wanna do backflips to make sure that we get input from the entire community for large projects such as this. No other alderman does this. All right, thanks for listening. I'm sorry, can I also add that this is our third community group meeting as well. So I wanna make sure you know, that we've, we've met with many people regarding this project. Thank you, Douglas. Next we have Ginny. Okay, am I unmuted? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, um, hi everybody. I know it's getting late. We've had a lot of discussion and um, to use a, a, a term that is um, very current in our parlance of COVID, I'm gonna try and pivot just slightly and 
um, build a little bit on some of the themes here. Um, we had uh, at Andover Street Neighbors had put together a, a small committee to address some of these concerns when we learned about the Clark Street Black Club's vote a couple of weeks ago. And, um, and as it's been noted, um, we did these petitions, all those things are in the record now, but the number of votes cast 53 um, against the upzoning and one four. But the thing that really um, I wanna focus on is this idea of not just a master plan for the 46th ward, but what Jackie so eloquently talked about is a master plan for Clark Street. And we, we think this is a really unique opportunity. And I look toward um, a couple other other examples, one of them being what the Astor Gates did on the south side of Chicago um, as an artist and activist, which I think Jackie is. And I will add myself to that, um, that grouping because I've been in the neighborhood for 33 years on Dover and have worked in many social service capacities, agencies, volunteering, and done a lot of public community art in the neighborhood. And I also own a, a business just a little bit west of uptown. Um, so I'm in the business world, I'm in the art world, and, I'm, and I've been very active in the community for a long time. So this question of, of a master plan, I think speaks to some of the issues that Sydney brought up, James, um, Sydney James. Jackie brought up and a number of others, uh, including Cynthia about inclusivity and process and really what kind of community we, we want this to be and how do we take what's on the table in front of us and look at it through the lens of what this, what this community really could become. And um, I think Cynthia really um, drove that point home about it not being reactive that, um, with her comments, oh yes, that's a great idea. Let's 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 let people who come in become part of it. But how do we how do we lead on this? And so one of the things that came up in our our committee discussions was this master plan feels really crucial, and we really would love um, Alderman Kappelman for you to to take a lead. This has come up a few times before. It was actually part of a process when Alderman Schulter and I walked up and down Clark Street years ago. So this goes back. Um, looking at what Clark Street, Clark Street could become. So this is not a new discussion. And um, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move away from the particulars of the building itself, <clears throat> excuse me, the scale and so on, to, to try and emphasize this point again about, about a master plan and how both wards, 46th and 47th, because Clark Street is on both sides of the street, really could become involved. This could be a model, not just for our neighborhood, but for other communities and for the whole city on how we, how we make this happen. Bronzeville is another example I can think of. And that speaks to diversity. So diversity is not an add-on. Diversity is something that should be at the heart of these discussions and the heart of what we do. And I also want to um, just add one thing about, I think the way Dover Street neighbors have been perceived as being 100% anti-development, and that is really not true. Um, we, we want development, we want life, we want activity, we want um, vibrancy, we want walkability, we want street presence, but I think our, our take on it is a little bit different. It's not just retail with residential above it, it's, it's the arts, it's culture, it's the things that go on around there, like um, farmer's markets and concerts in Lincoln Square and the things that, that make it lively where you, you feel like you're part of something that's living and breathing and active and alive. And I think those are our concerns as much as what this process has seemed to be about. And um, with respect to the Alderman, I hear everything that you're saying about this process. And I do think it is a unique process that there is a lot of voice um, that goes on in the 46th Ward. But I guess I wanna know is how do we take that further? Um, the committee, the development committee is, is going to make their decision tonight. Um, and our residents who are not part of that can say what we think, but we, we don't get a voice in that vote specifically. But I really want the takeaway from this to be, um, what's the vision here? How do we support Jackie? How do we get involved? 
how do we make this the most incredible community and not just something where now that those of us who have invested years and years and years through, through crime, through all the things that we have all lived through um, that some of the newer residents are experiencing, but we've stayed with it because we love this place, because we feel it's something really special that we don't wanna see lost. And we don't see, wanna see it become just a, a place that is now the developers can come in, all of them, and no disrespect, I have developed properties too, but I've always done it with community input and community process and with incredible respect for everybody around where, we're, where we've worked. And I just wanna see that be at the, at the front of what we talk about and what we consider so that um, this place really stays special and isn't just a cookie cutter of everywhere else. Um, and that we all who live here and have been committed here don't feel like we're having things done to us that then we have to be reactive to, but we really have a seat at, at, a, at a big broad table. Sure, Jenny, I, I can answer some of that. Um, when I, my background is social work and I, my first job as a social worker was working to help settle refugees in the uptown community. <clears throat> and as a social worker, we make assessments. And so my idea once I became elected was I wanted a 46 ward master plan. Um, the 46 ward has the most extensive master plan of all 50 wards. Uh, it's on our website. The, the last one was done actually a number of years ago, 2013, but it's quite extensive and it talks about retail development and it talks about our community and what, what makes it so wonderful. So looking at the ward master plan, uh, it was my idea to push for um, a, a retail study. Uh, we've been pushing uh, to use TIF funds and I was working with a previous alderman Mayor Pawar, now it's uh, Alderman Matt Martin, uh, to use TIF funds to create, a, a, an, again, a master plan for the, the retail corridor. It, that's been in the process for over two years. This, the city has put it on hold for other projects, but now uh, from my discussions with the commissioner uh, Cox last Friday, uh, he's very excited about getting this going. And then there's a third master plan and that is with Jackie Taylor. Um, I was with Jackie Taylor when she first uh, spoke about uh, the plan that she had to grow uh, uh, the, the uh, Black Ensemble Theater and the $50 million that she needed. Um, and I fully am supportive I, I believe um, from my from what I heard today from the developer, they are they sounded rather excited to uh, work with uh, Jackie Taylor uh, to see what they could do to build on the vision that she has, and I, I think it's a vision that we all have. Um, and and uh, I want to make sure that when we do this retail study using TIF funds, that it also builds on this incredible vision. Um, so I, 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 I stand committed to making sure that we do everything we can to make our community stronger. And that's why I now had this 46 Ward Zoning Development Committee to also build on their strength to help us make a good decision. Rather than just, as I know what many aldermen do, they hear, they have one or two meetings, they hear from residents and then they make a decision. I'm not gonna do that. I wanna hear from everyone. Um, so this, this plan that you're talking about with the retail plan and the TIF funds, who, who gets to be part of that planning process? Well, the Department of Planning uh, and Development from the city, they're the ones who actually show the, the, the parameters, but the Department of Planning Development will work with our local chambers. It's about retail, so they should be working with our local chamber and we'll also make sure that the community is also involved in the process, especially residents on Clark Street and Dover. And, and uh, it'll also include the 47th Ward, which is across the street. Yeah, I think that's really important because, um, you know, I'm also, I'm also thinking about this somewhat, this division between residential and retail that, you know, there's a lot of crossover. Um, and, and I feel like that, that could be softened. And so there's, there's a ton of institutional knowledge. There's a ton of 
of um, intelligence among those, everyone who's lived here and so many ideas. So again, I wanna be sure that it isn't just people from the outside coming in. We've had so many experiences here of, in, and, and no disrespect meant to the current developers. I can see that you have been very thoughtful. The architect has been very thoughtful. You've listened, you've done your revisions, um, but that we've been told so many times what will be good for the community and never asked. And so that's kind of, I think something that Jackie spoke to, and I and I guess I hope that the development uh, committee, when the vote comes, will will take these perspectives into consideration. Because what we really wanted to ask tonight was to um, to press pause on this development until we had more of a, of a master plan in the works. So that yeah, Jackie's my only concern is that they let me just let me just years. finish. I'm not quite done. I'm almost done. Sure. Um, that I think her vision sounds so much like. What, what the Old Town School of Folk Music did for Lincoln, Lincoln Square and Lincoln Avenue. I mean, it was such a catalyst. And so I'd like to see her and, and her vision be absolutely centered so that these, whoever comes in from the outside is really listening. This is what Cynthia asked. This is what we're asking. Can we really be listened to and then take that and incorporate that into, into this visionary plan? That's something for the 46 Ward Donning Development Committee to consider. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jenny. Next, we have Carrie. Hi, uh, thank you for taking my question. Um, I actually live um, on Sunnyside and Clark. Um, and I guess my first comment would be about the Clark Street neighbors. Um, I saw a sign um, in, back in February about joining Clark Street neighbors and I emailed and um, got on the email list. And then back in August when um, I, the first actual communication with Clark, Clark Street neighbors came about, the first communication was um, about opposing this, um, about, excuse me, about Dover Street opposing the 4511 apartments and Clark Street wanting to, um, to be proactive with this. And I wanted to be involved as well. And um, I think because I'm on East West Street and not specifically Clark and not specifically Dover, um, for some reason, I was not involved in Clark Street, despite um, asking to be and wanting to be. So um, that's my question number one is who actually is involved um, and how to make people that aren't on main streets um, involved with um, the Clark Street neighbors. And then secondly, um, my question for the alderman would be about parking. I don't think um, parking has been uh, really addressed in this conversation tonight. Um, the building is proposed for 56 units, and we all know that nobody parks on Clark long term. Clark is uh, metered parking, and it's just, you know, come and go. Um, the long term parking would be on um, Sunnyside and Dover um, and the smaller side streets. And currently, um, those streets don't allow, um, you know, the parking is, is packed as it is. Um, I know there hasn't been any action at the uh, Black Ensemble Theater in a while um, because of COVID, but when there is anything going on at the theater, um, parking around here is, is a disaster. Um, you can't park anywhere um, within a couple block radius. Um, so I was wondering what the, from the Alderman, is there any consideration for making this um, local area maybe zoned? Zoned for what? Um, zoned parking for the, the people that live Perfect in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So um, first off, uh, Jeff Fishbane, he's right now the representative for Clark Street Neighbors. So I, uh, you can maybe uh, give him your contact information or I, I just created a zoning map. I'm not sure if it's on our 46 Word Zoning Development Committee, but it has all the contact information of every single uh, neighborhood organization. So you can certainly contact them. I know uh, I've never known a neighborhood organization that didn't want more uh, members. Um, as far as parking, uh, the Department of Planning Development um, has some very strict guidelines on have, limiting parking as much as they can. Uh, so uh, uh, even if they wanted to do a lot, the, the planning uh, department from the city is going to discourage that because they don't want to pass on that cost uh, to renters. But as far as if anyone wants to have zone parking for a permit, 
Uh, the city clerk's office has a process for doing that where um, you, and you can go to our website and we, we spell out that process. In the past, Dover Street was pretty adamantly opposed to having permit parking. But if, they, if anyone ever changes their mind, they just need to go through that process. And, and um, it's pretty easy. I, I actually did it on my street because I'm right by Aragon Ballroom. And it, it's a pretty easy process. We cannot do permit parking on uh, retail corridors like Wilson or Clark Street or Montrose or Lawrence. It's not allowed. The city clerk's office won't allow it. Yeah, I'm, I'm certainly opposed to it too in general, but um, the what was maybe a 40 or 50 parking lot um, on, on uh, Sunnysided Beacon is no longer because that's going to be a, a condo as well. So um, certainly in the last couple of, of weeks and months, um, parking around the building that is proposed is is very hard to come by anywhere after I'd say 7 p.m. Um, so it, it's it's already been a crunch, and and this building hasn't even um, had any occupants. So okay, so um, I I would work with Dover Street neighbors and see if they're interested in creating permit parking. If they would like to do that and they go through the process, it's done. If they don't want to, as in the past they said no, then then. Um, you could possibly rent out spaces. I know the, the developer said that uh, he has plenty of empty spaces uh, in his other site. So that's something to pursue as well. I would add to, I know um, Alderman Kappelman, you mentioned this, but Carrie, if I don't have your contact information, I'm, I'm not sure if there's a way to break out a chat in the Zoom. If not, maybe you can just send that to the Alderman and I can get that that way. Um, I, would, I certainly don't want to um, imply that there was any, uh, that we missed you. I don't, recall if you said exactly where you are in relation to the Clark Dover on the side street. Um, and I certainly don't need you to do that here. Um, but we want to make sure that, uh, to your point, anything that come, any opinion that um, is, is relevant and, and certainly a united voice in, in this particular section of the community that we have involved. Um, I would also say that uh, as we've sort of transitioned from uh, like a particular development into a larger city planning conversation. I think it, it, it's certainly relevant and, and needs to be had. Um, I certainly have not been um, part of one for the 46th board at large. I, I would also say that I, I don't think that um, this particular type of development and, and any master plan need to be uh, mutually exclusive. I think be entirely uh, overlapping. Um, so I know uh, Alderman Campbellman, you mentioned a, a study that is forthcoming, um, certainly something that we're excited about. Um, and, and again, I think that this, this can be hopefully the start of something that um, creates a lot of diverse blossoming for this community, um, certainly not the opposite. So um, Carrie, again, I don't know if there's a way for you to get straight in touch with me through the, um, the meeting tonight, but certainly if not, um, maybe we can connect through the Alderman. Hey Jeff, I just I already um, put your uh, email address in the chat, so everyone can. You're, as usual, two steps ahead. Yeah. So, it. oh, thanks. All right, let's uh, move on to the next question, please. Thank you, Carrie and Jamie. Uh, it's actually Jaime. Um, Jaime. But yeah, but it's not really a question, but it's more of a comment. Um, I am a resident of Dover Street. I actually live at forty four twenty North Dover, and. Do Dover Street um, Neighbors Association. They, they. I was one of the people that they did come up to speak to, but as when when they spoke to me, I want to say they were very determined to push their point forward about how they did not, were opposing this. Um, so I just listened to them, but it wasn't until after they felt that maybe I was on their side that they were like, "Oh well, we have a ballot for you." Um, I just want to say that they were very strategic in how they were going about asking for ballots from people. Um, for the responses. Moreover, there was an email sent yesterday before all the ballots were counted. So, I mean, they talk about legitimacy of a process, but I don't think their process is that legitimate to begin with. Um, on top of that, since I do live at, four, I am a minority and I live at 4420 North Dover, right behind the building that's at 4420 North Clark. And it is a four story building. Um, the rest of Dover talks about shadows, but it really doesn't bother you. When you think about it, there is no shadow that's gonna happen. The sun it rises in the it rises from the east and goes to the west um, by the time six seven o'clock comes around it's almost evening so there 
there is no light that you're seeking that you will get anyway. So um, I, overall, I just see the Dover Street uh, Neighbors Association, which I'm technically a part of. I just see like they just they don't want change and they, they are just stuck in their ways and they just they want a reason to oppone it, oppose this this this. I, I just I don't get it. And I've, I've tried to be an active member and I have been. I attended the first meeting, but immediately everyone's everyone's thought was like we we really don't want anything that looks anything like what this developer any de it was before before it was about another development that was similar to this because I know there's been multiple because I've been here for about four years now and it's always an opposition and they talk about this master plan but I mean you guys have talk about it yourself said it's been a plan for years but why has it taken so long clearly nothing is happening with that yeah that's all I got to say Thank you, thank you. We're we're going to get this word master. I mean, we're going to get this retail master plan. Uh, uh, Commissioner Cox promised me he'd get on it, uh, but we've been working on this for two years. Thanks, Jaime. Um, thank you, Jaime. Uh, yeah. yeah. The the next question is Patrick, and that will be the last question. Patrick. Patrick. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Uh, I'm Pat Phelan from Dover Street and um, kind of get a little history into this is that um, we started this process in March and because of the virus and everything and what's transpired, we were involved with the process at that time. And then um, as the summer went along, um, there wasn't any communication whatsoever with um, anybody, the alderman's office or the developer on this process. And there was a meeting, um, well, and as a result, uh, it was mentioned before that we didn't approve of uh, a previous zoning back about two or three years ago. And so I kind of wonder if there was some maneuvering going on that created Clark Street Block Club and um, it, it's just too bad that they didn't communicate with us and we could have been able to um, work together on this and, and come up with something that was um, um, more in line with the area and, uh, and reduce the density um, of something like this. Um, I'm not a particular fan of the TOD, the transit oriented development because what it does is it doubles the size of the building, um, the apartments, and reduces the parking in half. So you get twice as many rentals and you have half as many parking spaces. And it's just, I, I think the density is, um, um, it's an issue. So as a result, um, there was a meeting with the Clark Street Black Club, I guess on September 1st, which we weren't aware of. Um, then they had a follow-up meeting on September 12th and they finalized this. And as it turned out, it was kind of like an end around where Dover was not in the process anymore. And it's a little bit frustrating that this process turned out the way it did because we could have worked together on this and come up with something that was very um, agreeable to everybody. But what's happened is, is a, a couple people in Clark Street in the 4700 block decided to have a black club amongst themselves, did not involve anybody in the 45 or 4600 block into their black club and they made a decision to bypass us. And as we're talking right now, in regards to listening to this, uh, Jeff, Jeffrey Fishbane knows more about this development than the developers, it looks like. He's extremely proactive. So I don't know what his relationship is with the developer, but um, I'd be willing to work with him but I, I just don't like the way this was maneuvered where we are, we're kind of left out in, in this whole process. And so the only process we had was to, how are you doing, Jeffrey? 
um, was to come tonight to this meeting, which has probably gone long, long, it's gone on for quite a long time now. And um, we've been sitting here waiting to get on. So it's, it's, it's a little frustrating from a standpoint of being left out of the process. And second, um, even feeling like we're being left out of the process tonight because there's many Dover Street uh, residents that wanted to ask questions and didn't get a chance to ask any questions. Uh, well, Patrick, I, I can explain. Uh, first off, uh, it, it's, I'm sensing that there's a belief that uh, Clark Street pretty much um, finalized its decision and then and that uh, now it goes before the 46 Ward Zoning Development Committee and they uh, rubber stamp or, or they vote it the way uh, Clark Street uh, Block Club wants. That, that's not the process. And I don't want that to be the process. I want it to first go to Clark Street to have a say uh, and get some feedback. And that's all they do is feedback. They do not vote on whether or not is this a yay or nay on an up zone. They give feedback, and then once they get feedback, then it goes before this committee. This is the committee that does a lot of feedback and negotiations. This is a time for Jackie Taylor to, to come forward. This is a time for residents, Truman Square neighbors, Dover Street. This is the time for all of us to come together to start to start the negotiations. Um, and so, so that's what's happening. It's happened tonight. This, this, the decision is not, was not made in September 12th. It, it's being made now. I, well, I can't make that any clearer. I've been saying this for many, many times. And I, I know people are focused on, on Clark Street and whether or not they're legitimate and what their background is. I, I'll say this again, it, it doesn't matter. It could be just Dover Street neighbors looking at this and they could say a solid no. And even if they said a solid no, it would still go before the entire 46 Ward Zoning Development Committee. I've said that several times. I'll, I, I think I've said it enough. Well, and I would um, just add to that too, Alderman, because I know there was some comments. I'm not, I'm not finished. I want to talk quite a bit tonight and I've waited all night to talk. Go ahead, Patrick. So I would like to talk. Um, what kind of bothers me a little bit is Dover Street voted 53 against it to one. That is properties. That's not people. That is properties. They have really no input into this other than one vote, and they are directly impacted by this development. Now, Clark Street, which is a black club, which seems to me to be very suspect to be a, a maybe one, two, three, maybe four people. They live two blocks away from this project and they have more say in it than the person that lives 50 to 75 feet behind the project. And the people on the petition, 21 people, that were close, I mean, right across the street and next door to this development, didn't have any input into it, didn't even know about the development or the black club. So to me, it seems like something's going on here. There is an end around Dover Street and there's an end around the people that live on the 4,500 block and the 4,600 block. And so Patrick, I have a great question. question. Uh, what if the process, what if Clark Street never existed and only Dover Street provided input? How would tonight's meeting be any different? Well, I think that we would have more time to talk, one thing, because uh, Jeffrey has, um, he's, he's been talking quite a bit and uh, we might have gotten our message out, but I don't think we're getting them. And you didn't even include the people on Clark from the petition. Well, Cynthia, Cynthia was there and talked to you, but you didn't get a chance to let anybody else talk. Patrick, 
this meeting started at seven. It's 9.43. It, it's pretty rare for an alderman to have a meeting that's now close to three hours. And, and I'm, we, this is a time for people to discuss. Right. Uh, I, now, if there's I, going I, to be a vote, my process is it's the members of the 46 Ward Zoning Development Committee. They decide when a vote's going to occur, not me. It's okay. They decide. Well, that's fine. I mean, I'm a little frustrated because it's been so long to get on and the same people are talking all the time. And so as a result, I don't think the rest of us got a chance to even participate in this uh, meeting. So that, that's why we have a process where you have a uh, representative from Dover Street who speaks on your behalf, just as I have a representative from Truman Square Neighbors who speaks on my behalf. Well, the president of Dover Street is in California and uh, there was no way to adjust this meeting for him. Well, there is a representative, Ken, who um, is on the meeting and he was chosen as the alternate so you do have a representative and scott promised that he would be in on this uh tonight and he hasn't been but uh, you have uh, one representative each each neighborhood organization has one vote and there have been a number of folks from dover street that have spoken tonight before you yeah but the president hasn't he, right and the president you know i i you have to speak to your own president i we don't have well, that's not ours but i, I was just raising there the is an question. alternate there is an alternate has been on you there have been a number of people from dover street who have spoken already okay i'm just going to summarize it then from the standpoint that um i just think that um dover street was involved in the process at the beginning and was left out at the process at the end. Yes, because it was. It was. Yes. And so you can understand our frustration that it seems like we've been railroaded. Well, I think my frustration is, um, I don't think I'm getting, I'm communicating it well enough. I believe people on Clark Street should have a say on zoning matters on Clark Street just as I believe uh, residents on Dover Street should have a say on what happens on Dover Street. And the same with Beacon. So I, I believe in the golden rule. And, but the good news is it's not made solely by residents on Clark Street. It's made by the entire 46 Ward Zoning Development Committee. No, that's okay. Um, it just, um... It's an unfortunate circumstance, that's all. And uh, I, I appreciate it. I, I've just probably, because I've been waiting so long, I've been frustrated. Okay. Speak. Uh, I, the, in chat, there's a conversation going on and people are asking for the Dover Street position statement, which I, although Ginny was very eloquent, I don't think she really made all the points that are in that position statement. And uh, the chat page has run out of room. There's no, no place where I can enter anything, even if I had that position statement. Hey, you... Marty. Hey, Marty, yeah. could, we, could we wait on this bef until the um, deliberation time? Because we really need to get moving here. So uh, well, what... I think it, I think it'd be great to end this point because we do have we did have everything, all the the uh, petitions and everything like that I sent to all the committee members. It's on our website. I think if you want to go piece by piece with the committee itself, I think that's great. Um, but I think it's time to to move on to the next part part of our meeting because it's it's almost ten o'clock and we have a lot of people leaving the meeting and and that's going to be a problem. Yeah, so what I my point was going to be is I think we need to defer this decision to another day. Okay, and I think that that's a great discussion point for the committee. Okay. Can you take that as a motion? No, uh, not right now. No, that's not where we're at in the meeting. Okay. But thank you. Um, let's, uh, Alderman. So once the questions are over, we've already had our last question. Yes, yes that was you. the last question. Okay, so thank you everyone for asking your questions and providing feedback on this project. Out of respect for everyone's time, we will now move on to committee deliberation. The committee will determine whether or not they want to vote tonight. That's their decision. So... At this point in time, it, the developers and the attorneys can leave and then we'll deliberate with the members. Great, thank you again, Alderman. We really do appreciate it. Sure, absolutely. Thank you.
Okay, is everyone, are we just the committee now? Uh, I think as I'm looking at this list, I think that uh, Mr. Bernstein had two things going. He might've had a phone and a video going. He's still here in this group. Oh. I think Stan Bernstein is one of the developers. Thank you, Stuart. Um, Absolutely. Stan should have just been removed. There you go. Now he's gone. Thank he's you. All right. Sorry about that. Of course. Thank you for letting us know. Absolutely. Um, obviously, I is think the that attendees, yeah. is the attendees list different than the panelists list. The panelists list, I think, is the list of people who are on this uh, uh, call as voting members. Is that right? Correct. Correct. Okay. Would the attendees list include the panelists list? No. No. In other words, uh, on my screen is still showing 32 attendees uh, on the Yes. Call. The panelist list dropped because the um, presenters were also part of the panelist group. The attendees are residents who were asking questions and are also watching the meeting. Are they in this okay. particular portion of the meeting or have they been segregated at this point? The attendees are still at the meeting, but it's now just that the committee is deliberating. And Got so it. of okay. the 26 you see, those are the committee members that you can hear at this time. Got it. That was that was I, I that was what I understood the question to be. I just didn't understand how it worked. So I'm mm -hmm. I'm a Zoom, I'm a Zoom pro, but not that good at these big meetings like this. Me either. I was thoroughly confused. <laughs> so thank, thank you. you. I'll have to give a class on this. <laughs> exactly. So discussion? I mean- Well, I was actually really happy to hear them talk about the sewer issue and how they remedy it. Having a reserve tank somewhere in the building so that you don't just have you know five stories of water go down and drain at once. Charles, I, I agree with you. Uh, having lived on Beacon now for uh, almost 10 years, uh, obviously the, the local sewers, do, uh, Dover and uh, Beacon have uh, times where they're overworked. And I agree with you. That was really good to hear that they are gonna have separate sewer service. Yeah, I'm really cool. And I think um, Clark, uh, Alderman Kaplan, you can remind me, uh, Clark was completely redone, right? The entire sewer along Clark when they did the water main work a couple of years back, right? My understanding is it was done. Yeah, that's what I thought. Question. Um, Mary Lund? Oh. Mary Ann Lund has her <laughs> hand raised. Question first, but I have had my hand up for about an hour. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Go ahead. What's your question? Mary Ann? Oh. I'm sorry, I thought we were doing Mark first. So, I mean, I, we definitely heard a lot about procedural issues, about notification. There's a new block club, the height, parking. These are pretty typical zoning issues that we hear. What I'd like to bring up is what happened at our last zoning meeting, which was only three weeks ago. And um, we did have a similar situation to this where we had some neighbors who were upset with uh, the height, the level of involvement from the developer. And we were deliberating, uh, a, um, a space has been purchased by Howard Brown. So very uh, excellent neighborhood partner, uh, you know, really thinking about health, physical health of low income, LGBTQ community, excellent. And the vote was um, almost unanimous that it passed. And I remember Alderman, you said something about, we had to think about the greater good. And I think that really came out in that meeting. You know, we, we put aside issues that we normally have for zoning and thought about what is going to be the greater good for our community. And I would argue that one of the perspectives that I think was alluded to by some of the attendees, but hasn't been explicitly stated, is to think about the cultural health of our community and the health of diversity at the community. We look around at this room of panelists, you know, for whatever reason, you can blame the block clubs on it, but this is a largely white group of people. And we're talking about um, a minority uh, owned business community we're talking about Black Ensemble Theater, which is just a, you know, a pillar of the Black community here. And to think about who's not at the table and who we're making this decision for, um, who's the most impacted. And this is you know, a new era of anti-racism that we're, we're talking about. Um, so I, I commiserate a lot with Jackie Taylor. I wonder if you know, her master plan, it might fit in with these developers, it might not. It might not be the right puzzle piece. I know she had mentioned at one point she wanted 
studio gang to be an architect that she worked with. Um, and it may end up being a good fit, but it's very hard to reverse a decision once it's been made. So for me, I don't think that it's prudent for us to push this development forward right now when we haven't had this discussion about a master plan completely. So I'll make a motion to delay the vote tonight. Does anyone second that motion? I do. I, I do as well. Yes. I'm sorry, who was the first person? Jim, 3660. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Can I offer up a competing motion to take a vote tonight? Well, Second. we had to first vote on this. On this, one. okay, that's fine. Man. So again, I, I'm not normally involved here. Dustin Fogel is, and I'm sitting in his stead. I'm not familiar with the process. How do we do the votes? Is it a so show of is hands? Is there any discussion? And after any discussion, then there's a vote. Okay. Um, can I offer up my perspective real quickly since I've unmuted? Um, I, as I said, am a now nine year coming up on 10 year resident of Beacon. Um, live about a block and a half away from this development. And I've obviously witnessed firsthand uh, an, a district that was once thriving, essentially falling apart. A lot of those storefronts on this block of Clark are empty, um, not due to you know uh, anything other than I think the community that has been in that block uh, moving to different places. A lot of the Korean owned businesses have moved to Albany Park. They've moved to the suburbs and Niles and what have you, and there haven't been replacements. Um, I had the opportunity to meet with our board prior to uh, this meeting to get our vote and to, you know, essentially appreciate what it is that uh, my fellow board members felt about this development. And I think we're all in agreement that this particular development represents a uh, big step forward for this particular area. And my big concern, if we table this, um, and let me add as an aside, I've been here almost 10 years. Um, I've only seen one mention of a plan ever for this uh, set of blocks, which has been moribund and, 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 and having difficulty for a long time. Um, I actually, the reason I'm using the term moribund is I looked up a, an article uh, that was actually referencing the loan time that I saw any plan reference whatsoever for this block, which was Ms. Taylor's uh, proposal to add a soul food restaurant across from the BET theater. That of course was never built. It was never filled in. And with all respect to Ms. Taylor, who is a great asset to this community, and I certainly hope she participates in our block club, uh, unfortunately, there have been a lot of there's been a lot of talk of plans, but I didn't hear anything tonight about an actual plan about money that's actually been allocated about properties that have already been bought. And so this gets me to my observation and my concern. We are in a situation uh, in terms of our economy where we are dealing with the effects of COVID and we don't know what the future is going to look like. There is a, you know, a, a greater than 50% chance, I think, that if we hold off on a development like this or any development on this uh, stretch of uh, blocks that, uh, you know, in, in favor of waiting for this type of plan, that we're going to lose an opportunity to really make a transformative change on this set of blocks. Right now, there is no activity on the 4500 block at all at night. I mean, there are some people go in and out of the ISIL building, but it is dead quiet. This would add residents uh, who would shop at the local businesses. These this would add eyes in the street uh, to a, a block that really needs them. A point of order. Stu is now arguing about whether he's should... actually he's doing discussion. I'm so offering I... up. I'm offering up my perspective as to why I think a a motion to table this is foolhardy. And this, I'm representing the block club, Beacon Block Club, because we all agree on this one point. We believe that at this point in time, in the absence of a fixed plan, and we've seen no evidence that there is one from Ms. Taylor's group or from uh, the, the ward as a whole, that this is an opportunity to improve this block and move this block forward, uh, which will ultimately inure to the benefit of everybody in the area. And so I am articulating my opinion, true, Marty, but I am also offering up my block club's opinion. And this is just my observation as to why a motion to table this is a poor decision in my mind, given the economic situation we're dealing with. So I appreciate your time and thank you so much. You know, 
if I could, uh, I'd just like to piggyback off something Stuart said. I think I've been on this committee, Alderman, for eight years, maybe, <laughs> however long you've had it. And I think one thing that we've seen, those of us who have been on the committee for since its onset, and even those who have joined since, is that whenever we did discuss a development of this type, it seems like at the 11th hour, there's always somebody who says, wait a minute, we could do something tremendously better. Let's, uh, let's do that instead. And I think what ends up happening is, um, you know, people have ideas and a lot of the ideas are, are I guess, great thoughts in, 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 in theory, but in practicality, I don't think they really, um, they really have the kind of substance, um, you know, to drive them forward. And, and for example, in this situation, I mean, the bike is great. It opened, what, nine years ago? What's happened to the rest of this? I mean, the, the building across the street from it's empty, vacant. Two, was it two of this, the units in this very building that we're discussing tonight are empty? Uh, up and down the block, you've got lots, right? Across the street from the Black Ensemble Theater is an empty lot. Um, you've got another tear down farther down the street. And I think sometimes maybe within the people who live sort of in the community, they think, well, let's wait for the perfect solution to arise. Um, but I think sometimes you take a step back and you look at a ward. My parents live up the street, so I go down Clark all the time. And you realize that there is no perfect solution coming. It's not even close. It's not like, well, there's another investor who's interested in this if they could only have a time, you know, uh, an opportunity. No, there's nothing. There hasn't been anything. Hasn't been anything in 10 years. Hasn't been anything in 20 years, 30 years. I mean, I think Stuart's right that the economy right now is, is, is probably going in a different direction. And, um, this, this is probably the best opportunity that street has. I, I agree that having people in the neighborhood is a good idea. Um, you know, that's a, that's a neighborhood that has, from a residential standpoint, not many people at all. Um, it can't hurt the businesses that do exist in the area to have more people that live there. So um, I, think, I think his points are well taken. That's, that's my perspective. Anyone else? Uh, I have something. Um, you know, I, I, I've lived uh, two and a half blocks from this proposed development for the past 17 years. Um, and, you know, for a large percentage of that time, um, the, the, certainly the area between Montrose and Wilson uh, is best described as uh, I don't know, falling apart. Um, you have buildings in those two blocks that have been, I don't know if they've been condemned, but they're on the, they're falling in on each, uh, on themselves. We have open lots. Um, we have buildings that look substantially similar to the proposed project. And I think we'd be doing a tremendous disservice to all the people, to all the, whether they're minorities or not, who have put their hard-earned money um, into their businesses by, 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 by passing, by delaying further an opportunity for those folks to have more people walk in their doors. Um, there's, no, there, there's no real foot traffic um, up and down Clark. There hasn't been, except for on weekends. Let's just be honest. For people of the, those of us who've lived within this um, few blocks area, they, we know, we know uh, what it's been like. On the weekends, it was it was crazy. It was cars double parked on both sides, couldn't get around, and then it was um, um, tumbleweeds uh, during the week. Um, and now, yeah, there's essentially no business. And so to say that it would be an affront to the minority business owners uh, to pass a project that would ensure people uh, walking past their businesses every day, I think is, is a bit misleading. Um, secondly, I do wanna to touch on the, the Dover Street um, issue. Uh, we've been trying to meet with Dover and come together with Dover for years. Um, and I understand that you know some organizations, some, some block clubs are less active than others and have been maybe in hiatus, but the, the, the most productive meeting and the only meeting I've had, and certainly in a one-on-one -on -one situation with anyone from Dover has been with Ginny Sykes 
um, about 100 feet from my doorstep a week and a half ago. It was very productive. I wish she was leading the organization. Unfortunately, she's not. Uh, but anyway, in terms of uh, impact on the community, I think it's a good opportunity. They've uh, expressed um, an interest, a clear interest on this meeting, in this meeting um, with working with uh, Ms. Taylor uh, and, and the alderman has, has uh, also suggested that there's money available for uh, Ms. Taylor's um, project, which I don't believe is funded or anywhere close to it, um, but we'd love to see that. So. In uh, on behalf of Grayson Wilson um, and, and the folks I talk to on a daily basis, um, uh, I don't see any reason to delay the vote on this. I see Mark Zipper. Yes, uh, James, could you clarify, you know, the biggest issue to me, the biggest uh, or the strongest uh, no on this is from Dover. All right, and I want to be clear why they're saying no since the vote is so high. I understand it to be about this master plan, but I'm confused about this. And that is, is this the ward master plan that you've had published on your website for a while that includes everything in the ward? Or are they looking for something specific to that area of Clark? And if it is number two specific, have you done that for other areas like that in the ward. And before you answer, the overall reason I'm asking this is that in all the other projects over eight years or however long we've been doing this, we've been given specific things. And you know, we've heard them, the common ones many times, parking, density, the look of the building, the height, the sun, you know, that's what I expected to hear in this meeting. But we've never heard it, I don't think, about a plan. So I need some clarification from you about what this plan is. Um, to be honest, I, I really wasn't sure when I heard a master plan, I wasn't sure if it was the ward master plan that the last revision was 2013, or was it the uh, retail corridor plan using TIF money that we've been working with Uptown United for the past couple of years, or was it the master plan that Black Ensemble Theater with Jackie Taylor had um, I think it's the one with uh, Black Ensemble Theater, Jackie Taylor. I first heard about this master plan, I think two or three years ago, um, uh, and they needed $50 million. Um, to say it's, a, it's a big ask. Uh, I, I, I'll be honest, I, I don't know exactly where that funding is. Um, but I, but I do know it's a dream, um, but she'll have to answer that, but there's not, there's not been anything right now. I know that there was a, someone purchased a building and is working with Jackie Taylor and actually they had to tear the building down because it was condemned. And that now is a, a lot waiting for something to happen. So I know she's talking with people and she's been talking with people for a couple of years, but I'm not sure uh, a development has happened from those discussions. So there's not a new, a new plan. They're asking for some plan. Dover Street is, that's my understanding, you correct me if I'm wrong, but there's no real plan that you have on a radar screen to create other than our overall ward plan that's on your website. Well, well, we have asked that that's not quite accurate. We um, have been working with Uptown United, the 47th Ward, um, and we and also Jackie Taylor, because um, we had a discussion to try and raise or to see if we could use some TIF dollars to create a corridor study um, specifically for this. So that would be to hire an organization that would actually bring the community, both businesses, residents, and all stakeholders together to, um, to create a plan for Clark Street. Um, initially, um, we, were, um, we were pushed aside for other projects that are very large actually going on. But, um, and then, uh, but the alderman spoke with Commissioner Cox at this um, past Friday, and he is definitely open to doing that. Okay, all that makes sense. Mark?
Hello. Hello. Hi. Uh, oh, good. Okay. <laughs> oh, sorry. Several, you know, there are several properties on the uh, street that are available right now. And, you know, whoever they sell to, they sell to. And, you know, the, the master plan is not going to be consulted by most sellers and buyers, unless somebody like Jackie, for instance, could have bought this building that we're talking about. It sold a few years ago for a million seven. She had her chance. You know, I harken back to when, oh, go ahead, Chester. Chester? Is speaking. Okay, I'll just do it real quick. I remember back several years ago, I, I lived on Sheridan across the street from McCutcheon for 10 years, and now I'm on Kenmore. But I remember there used to be an El Pollo Loco years ago on that corner of Lawrence and Sheridan that they demoed, it was an empty lot for years that they did drug deals in. And during what I think might've been my first zoning board meeting with you in uh, Weiss Hospital, I think, um, there was so much opposition to building that, again, you know, transit oriented design building, which I do have an issue with. I mean, I want more parking. I want lots of parking, but that's just me. <laughs> You're, I mean, you're, you're 10 minutes from, that, from the Wilson stop. How bad is that? That's, that's all. It, but if, if you don't actually pull the trigger on it, the tip money goes away, the developer goes away, and then it's an empty lot still. Just give me, okay, what the heck? Okay, anyone else? Yes, could I speak? Yes, Ken, oh. please do. Well, thank you very much, Teresa. Okay, so a lot of folks have been um, mentioning uh, Dover Street Neighbors Association, um, using our name in vain. That's, that's fine, I just want to uh, mention, mention a couple of things. So <laughs> the big question is, why is uh, Dover Street such a roadblock? Why do they want to stop every development? Why won't they allow us to uh, build anything? Okay, I want to try to set the record straight as best as I can. Dover Street wants development we want very badly, okay? As far as a master plan, we want a master plan, okay? I've been authorized to vote to put this, this on pause, this development here. And believe me, it looks like, it looks like a nice building in, in many ways, okay? Um, if the only two choices are pause or vote against it, I would have to vote against it, which is too bad because again, there's a lot of nice things about it. The reason we want the master plan is because I've only been here for a relatively short time since uh, uh, 2017. We bought the property in 2016 and took, um, uh, and with all the landmark requirements, it took a while for us. It took 20 months, eight months to get the uh, permits and um, another 12 months to, uh, to renovate it and everything. And I've been at these meetings since 2016, where it's the same type of thing. There's um, uh, a proposal on Clark, a building wants to go up to about five stories. One time it was 60 feet, another time 55, 58 or whatever. <clears throat> and uh, Dover Street has voted, voted against it for various reasons that it would, uh, it would cut our sunlight. Um, what about the, uh, the sewer system? And I'm very happy to hear the answer about the sewer system today. That's in my mind, that's a big deal. And I will bring that back to the rest of uh, Dover Street. Okay, as well as the foundations, okay. It's a nice sign that he said that it should only be a four foot foundation feet. Um, <clears throat> I'm hoping it'll be just that. He said he can't promise. We'll see. Um, <clears throat> but what I want to say, like every time these plans come up, it's basically the same type of thing getting, it's, it's way too big. It uh, puts way too many people in an area that was zoned previously for say half that half the units or whatever, I shouldn't say people units, excuse me. <clears throat> and people know what the zoning is before they come in, okay? I understand there's, um, there's an economic crisis right now. I totally get the idea that if somebody's gonna come and develop, we should take advantage of it. I, I understand that and believe me, I'm thinking about that. What I wanna say as the representative for Dover Street is that let's get a master plan. Let's not wait, let's not use this as an excuse. Let's get people together as best as we can Let's get Dover Street, all the other block clubs who want to voice the developers. Let's get us in a Zoom room, I would say a room if this was uh, <clears throat> not the pandemic and hash things out. Nobody's going to get exactly what they want, including Dover Street, but we'll get to a point where we see this is 
this is what we can do in order to move forward, okay? Something besides that you won't be able to, uh, <clears throat> um, to do, you know, it's not worth it our, you know, as our time as developers to go in for something smaller, okay? And in Dover Street, we might say like, you know, look, for something um, that's, that's big, that's basically not gonna give us any sunlight uh, after, after 3 p.m., we're gonna dig in our heels, okay? But what I think is gonna happen when we get everybody in a room <clears throat> and just say, this is what we want in general for a master plan that will happen. It doesn't need to be $50 million uh, devoted to do this or whatever. It needs to be people in a room as best as possible with the, with the people that we have. And then after that, if we say, okay, this is what we have, we agree on the general guidelines, and it might be upzoning. In fact, my guess is that it will be some upzoning to some extent. Then various developers and people can come in and say, okay, this is what we want. This is within the guidelines. And hey, it met that master plan. Thanks. So I have a quick question. Have yes. you had a chance to read the 46 word uh, master plan? Um, Alderman Kappelman, I apologize. I've read a lot of things the last couple of days. I think for the 46 word. Yeah, we've had it since no. Okay, um, I I have not. Um, I will. I raised a point of order, and I was thrown out. I will uh, look at that. Okay, because that Sorry might that. answer a lot of your questions. Thank you. Okay, we, that was okay. very important for me to get that done. So, okay. Thank, okay. Master plan. Where where is it? I can go Google it, but if you know where it is exactly, I can. It's on the forty six word website, go to james forty six dot org. Uh huh. And then the search, you can just put in Ward Master Plan. That takes you right to it. I will do so. Okay. We were specifically talking about something on Clark Street, but of course I will look at that. It's the entire ward. Thank you. Thank you all. Thanks. Thanks, Ken. Uh, any other uh, questions just for the discussion or discussion items? I think David has a question. He has his hand raised. He's, yeah. raised. He's been very patient. Yeah, I, I think we should table this uh, vote um, because I think when we got the notification um, that, you know, about this development, it came with like this uh, sentence that the local block club was agreeing to this development. And as we found out, there's other voices that need to be heard. And so I would like to have time to read um, and to get the master plan that Jackie has. I think she's a very important person on that street that needs to be heard very carefully. And I would also like to reread the master plan from 2013 that Alderman James Kaplan came up with and see like what the values are for developments like this. Um, we, we have the opportunity here in Uptown that there's, that there's folks, that there's developers who wanna put money into this neighborhood. And us as, as residents and us as stakeholders in this community, we get to make decisions like what, the, what kind of developments we want. And so that's exactly what is happening with Chucky speaking up. And that's why I think we should, we should wait and, and listen a little bit better what she has to say. Okay. Thank you. Um, anyone else for the discussion time? I have one more thing. And I, I hit on this before. Um, this has been something, what Dover has just said tonight has been something we've been imploring Dover to do for years. It is in really frustrating. I can't hold back. It's really frustrating to say this. It's duplicitous. It's nonsense. It's, it's, it, maybe it's a lack of communication. Okay. Maybe it is. But the is communication needs to emotion? get better. We have a there, there needs to be better communication. There needs to be more willingness to participate and not just at the last minute. You can't just say it as window dressing. It has to happen. We okay. live within blocks of each other. Let's do it. Jason, I, I hear your point. It's not really on the motion. Um, is there anyone else who has a discussion point on the motion to delay? If not... Uh, Marty, you said you had had a point of order and we didn't listen to you. Is there something, what, what was your point? That's what it was about. I, I think people are continuing to debate the, the development instead of the motion. Okay, I hear you. Okay, uh, Alderman. So let's uh, vote. Uh, 
Tressa, would you call? The roll? Yeah, the roll. Okay. Does, um, do you wanna restate the motion before we vote? So my understanding is um, Marianne Lalonde moved that we delay the vote today. Yes, that's my understanding. Okay. So yes to delay, no, not to delay the vote. Yep, so that's the question right now. She's the, 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 or the delay the vote. A yes is to delay the vote and no is to not de delay the vote. How do we vote? Oh. Well, uh, I'm a, just a moment, I'm almost ready. Uh, 3600 North, Lake, oh, let's see. Let's go to people who are here. How about 3660 <laughs> North Lakeshore Drive? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, let's see. 4848 North Sheridan. Uh, he's not present. Charles is, Charles left? Okay. No, I'm uh, here. It's just oh. I moved. <laughs> oh, I have uh, you on here. Okay. That's okay. That's okay. I do not want to delay. No. Okay. So no. Um, five, 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 Cornell, Kurt left. Um, Alice Leahy. She's still here. Alice, I, I think she left. Okay. Uh, Patrick Nagel. No. Okay, that's 828. Um, Beacon Block Club. No. No? Okay. No delay. Buena Park Neighbors. No. No delay. Clarendon, oh, he's not. Clarendon Park Neighbors. No. No, no delay. Uh, Clark Street Block Club, Jeff. No. No delay. Um, Lakeside Area Neighbors, Marianne. Yes. Yes. Um, historic Marty Tangora. Uh, yes, delay. Yes, delay. Okay. Um, let's see. Magnolia Malden, Kathy Cook. Yes. Yes, delay. Okay, real estate, Mark Zipper. No. No. Uh, transportation, Chester Karpulowski. Is Chester still on? Delay. Delay. Yes, okay. Um, UCC Patrick Waters. No. No. Um, Dan Mercurio, uh, Truman Square Neighbors. No. No. Okay. Let's see. Um, Mark Liberson, North Al North Alstead. No. No. Okay. Um, Forty three hundred North Marine, Michael Waltz. He's still on, Michael? Okay. And then um, Ainsley Wilmore Block Club, uh, Brian Beezer. No delay. No delay. Okay. All right, and Dover Street Neighbors. Yes, delay. Yes, delay. Okay. All right, and um, Michael Zink. East Lake Neighbors? No, no, no delay, oppose the motion. Okay, thank you. Um, let's see, and then I have Grayson Wilson Neighbors. No delay. No, and uh, Gunnison, James Jakeaway. No delay. Okay, thank you. All right, let's see. And then we have uh, one North Side, Noah. Uh, yes, delay. Yes, delay. Okay, got it. All right. And uh, Uptown United, Martin, he left. Okay. So we have... Um, friendly Towers. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. Fine. Friendly Towers, yes. Friendly Towers, yes. Thank you. Sorry, I had uh, someone else in there and then I forgot to change it. Okay. Right, so I don't miss you again. Okay, all right. So did I miss anyone else? 
Okay. I have one. I have 15 no's and five, six, seven, eight yeses. Seven, eight yeses. 15 no's. And 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 no's, yes. So the motion fails. Would anyone else like to make a, a different motion or? I'd like to make a motion to approve the plan as presented. I'll second. Who seconded? Uh, Stuart Berman Beacon. Thank you. Discussion? Um, I have one quick thing that we need to clarify. Uh, there were some people that were here a long time that left. So I'm, uh, we need to discuss, should they be included in this vote? Typically you have to be here to vote. I mean, you it's have to idea. vote as at least present. What? You have to be at least present. I know, I know it went long, but that's, I agree. Really I'm My asking. seven year old put herself to bed. We can vote. We can be here. Okay. <laughs> As uh, a man who has a seven year old, I get it. Yes, I agree. Stop okay. being anti children. <laughs> okay. Any other discussion? Okay. Um, <clears throat> can I just can I Jim? just say one thing? Sure. I think the issue of racism should not be lost. And that's something that not just we should be aware of, but also as we look at this committee and maybe try to do some outreach to get people of different races and colors and creeds as part of our grouping. Thank you, point well taken. It's something I have worked incredibly hard on. We've, we've uh, I have met with uh, people of color. I've met with a lot of different buildings, especially affordable housing. Um, I We've written emails, phone calls. We will keep working on it. I will encourage uh, a lot of you neighborhood organizations, please send someone of color. We need that, we benefit with it. But this Thank is you. what we have. Um, okay, any other discussion? Okay. Alderman. So uh, Tressa, call the roll. Okay. Do you want to state the? Oh, the motion is um, uh, move to approve the plan as presented. Uh, yes, you support um, moving the plan forward as presented. No, you do not. Uh, approve the plan as presented. Okay. 3660 Lakeshore Drive, Jim Hennigan. Yes. Okay. Uh, Charles Ramsdell. Are we voting a second time or just voting to close? <laughs> voting yes to approve the plan? No, no I do not. I don't. I, I approve it as is. Let's move okay. forward. Yes. Okay, that's a yes then. Yes, that's a yes. Okay. I don't want to change it. I think people are getting tired at this yes. point. Oh, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, uh, Patrick Nagel, 828 Grace. Yes. Okay. Um, Beacon Block Club. I've been so quick on my unmute. I wasn't quick there. Yes, we are in support of the local block club. So, yes. Uh, Buena Park Neighbors. Yes. Clarendon Park neighbors. Yes. Uh, Clark Street Block Club. Yes. Uh, Marty Tangora. No. Lakeside Area Neighbors Association, Marianne. No. Uh, let's see. Uh, Magnolia Malden, Kathy Cook. No. Um, real estate, Mark Zipper. Yes. Um, transportation, Chester. No. Um, sorry, uh, UCC, Patrick Waters. Yep. 
UCC. Y yes. Thank you. Uh, Truman Square Neighbors, Dan. Yes. Try, oh, okay, nope. Um, Friendly Towers, David. No. Um, North Halstead Business Alliance. Yes. Okay, let's see. Michael Waltz, he left, right? Okay. Um, Ainsley Winsmore. Ainsley Winmore, sorry. Brian. Yes. 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 Thank you, Brian. Uh, Dover Street Neighbors, Ken. Uh, no. Okay. Um, East Lakeview Neighbors, Michael Zink. Yes. Okay. Um, Gracelyn Wilson. Yes, we support the local block okay. club as well. Uh, Gunnison, James Jakeway. Yes. Thank you. All right. Um, one North Side, Noah. No. Okay. All right. Hey, Tristan, this is Martin from Uptown United. I'm back on the call. Um, just wanted to, we're, we're abstaining until our committee reviews the project next week. Yes, that's right. Thank you. I'm glad you're back. <laughs> All right. I'm going to write that in. Okay. Uptown United abstains. Okay. Did I miss anyone? Okay. Let's see. All right, 16, yes. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I have 15 yeses. Yeah, and now I have 15 five. yes. I have 15 yeses. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven no's and one abstain. That's okay. what I have, Tressa. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the motion passes to accept the, uh, to approve the uh, uh, development as presented tonight. All right. Everyone, thank you so much. You give me a reason to continue to love the 46th Ward in that you stayed engaged. It was difficult. It was a great discussion. Uh, I've learned a lot, and um, um, now we'll go forward. Can I, uh, can I offer a takeaway? I'm so sorry, James. I didn't mean to speak over you. If I do want to offer up one takeaway, I actually love the fact, and this is the first time I've participated in a meeting like this. I don't know if they're all like this, but one thing I did get was that there is a real community spirit in this neighborhood, and it would be really nice if we could build on this rather than take it as an opportunity to point fingers at each other, get angry at each other. There has been a lot of bad blood to Mr. DeVore's point uh, over the years with Sheridan Park Neighbors Association and who has what control with that. Let's build on this, Ken, and I think you agree. I see you nodding there. Let's make this a situation where we do come up with a good plan for Clark Street and a good plan for Lawrence and a good plan for Montrose and a good plan for Wilson. So the entire community is included, at least in this portion of the ward. Sorry, those folks who live in Lakeview, but we have always fought a lot and I'd really like us to work more together. So Ken, you and I have never actually officially met. I'd love to speak to you outside of this That's and true. actually get to know you. Marty, you and I know each other. Uh, you know, Jason, I know you obviously. Kathy, I've never met you. I've seen you on Facebook, so I know your name that way. It would be nice for us to get together and continue this going forward. So please, let's all take this not as an opportunity for recriminations and be mad. Let's take an opportunity to build from this, please. Thank you. Thanks much, guys. It's been a Appreciate long one. Myself. All right, everyone, have a good night. Thanks, good night. You Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you all, the men.